Welcome to Chicago, where all weekend we've been celebrating the food industry. We are in downtown Chicago on the biggest night of the year for the culinary industry. This is the James Beard Awards presented by Capital One. The red carpet show starts right now. You are looking live inside the legendary Lyric Opera of Chicago, where in just about 30 minutes, the culinary community will come together to celebrate. Welcome to the James Beard Awards presented by Capital One. Hello to all of you watching around the globe. I am Nilu Motamid, and I'm thrilled to be back here once again to welcome you to the Red Carpet Show. Over the next 30 minutes, we'll be setting the table for the biggest night of the year in food. And to give you a sneak peek at what we have in store at the gala tonight, we'll speak with chefs, nominees, presenters, celebrities, luminaries, and much, much more. We have full team coverage tonight on the red carpet, and I'd love to welcome my co-host, James Beard Award winner and red carpet veteran, Francis Lamb. Hi, Francis. Hey, Milo. I'm glad to be here again. So happy to be here. What is the vibe here right now? It's, I mean, it is getting litter and litter. As people are walking in, you can hear the excitement, you can feel the, you can feel the energy. It's really great. I, well, what's amazing about this community is that it wouldn't happen and it wouldn't be possible without the james beard foundation so let's take a closer look inside the awards show that is known as the oscars of the food world established in 1990 the james beard awards now spans three decades as i mentioned at the top of the show we've been celebrating all weekend yesterday was dedicated to the leadership awards and the media awards for the main event on saturday there's Sophia Rowe at the Media Awards presenting the medallion for Emerging Voices, an award she won back in 2022. And of course, our very own Frances Lamb, who took home two medallions last year. Speaking of Sophia, we're thrilled to head to the red carpet where the third member of our team is standing by. Hey, Hi, Sophia. Look Hi. at you serving looks. Oh my gosh, you guys look amazing. You look amazing too. What are you <laughs> wearing, girl? I am wearing head to toe Carolina Herrera. I did it just for you, Nilo. Oh, thank you. And I like it. I like it very, very much. We all benefit. We all, we are, we all are. And you kind of match the folks behind you. Listen, I'm trying. Look at this carpet. Do you see all the colors? Come on. Well, you color coordinated those ladies. Honey, everybody came to serve. Okay. Hey, everyone came to serve. The fashions, head to toe, giving. Well, Gorgeous. Thank you so much, Sophia. <laughs> We're going to be right back to you in a moment. Bye, honey. Bye. Okay, so. Crazy. You ready? All right. Uh. Hey, you guys. What's up? I'm so happy to be here. A few months ago, I was discussing this stress with some people I met at one of the Oscar parties in L.A. Um, for those of you who don't know what the Oscars are, they're basically the James Beard Awards for Hollywood movies. Um, we're back, we're back. We're back, we're back. Man, look at the shark. Go get him. Thank you. We're back. We're back. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> Back into 
to the archives. Carla Hall, Jesse Tyler Ferguson, and Conway Kwame Anwachi all did tremendous jobs hosting the James Beard Awards. They did it so well, they each hosted them twi twice. This year, things are a little bit different. Esther Choi, Gail Simmons, Eric Ajapong, and Andrew Zimmern. These are your fabulous hosts for the 2023 Beard Awards presented by Capital One. Hello, everyone. Welcome okay. to the red carpet like show. Huddle, huddle session. I know it's a little hot. It's good. <laughs> oh, wait, who's, who's the most excited to be here tonight? I think all of us, honestly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Equally, for sure. Collective jitters. <laughs> Why jitters? Just because you know it's it's a weighty job. You saw all those amazing people who hosted before us. It's an exciting night. I, I think it's I, I think it's because we're gonna see people's lives changed, and we're gonna get those moments that are gonna we get to bring back to our communities. Yeah, yeah. My life is changing at this moment. Right this now, it is. Yeah. We're watching a life <laughs> blue. Transformation. Yes. Exactly. All of this happening right now. It's like cocoon butterfly as we speak. Yeah. I mean, I, I whatever you guys have done today in the cocoon butterfly territory, everyone's looking extra fine, extra fine. Yeah. We, we we tried for you. We really did. We're really happy to have you. Now you guys have to get back to back. Oh, you do, maybe maybe we can keep you for one more moment. Have you eaten anywhere good since you've been here? Uh, yes. do, do beef sandwiches every day count? I was scared I wouldn't fit into my tuxedo, but then I had dinner with you last night, and we just had the whole back held together by safety pins. <laughs> Thank you. I thought you were bringing us all Italian beef. And Susie's on beef. Pepper, Susie's pepper, yeah. Susie's beef closed. Just like Not a month acceptable. ago, and I'm devastated. I'm, it was the best beef sandwiches in Greater Chicagoland. It is. I wanted to make you I happy, you. and I dropped the ball. Yeah, Failed. I mean that's a fail. Did you did you eat I'm, some more? I'm starving right oh, now. Oh, you're just hungry yeah. now. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> yeah, we have some chips. Right right brown banana. <laughs> We're gonna find some food. There's gonna be plenty of food tonight. Well, at eleven o'clock. Yeah, um, what do I do now? Okay, what that's what category are you most excited about? that you're presenting this year? I'm pretty excited about Emerging Chef. I just feel like it's just, it is the precipice of everything. It is the young, That's true. you know, That's the young say. bucks who are about to just change the world. And I just love giving them that opportunity. I'll, it also I'll, happens to I'll be our first to, award. I'll go, yeah. to the, I'll, <laughs> I'll go to the flip side. We, we already know who's won the humanitarian of the year. But I just love that award, and I'm thrilled that I get to put it around the neck of someone who I respect as much as Karen Washington. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Please head backstage before we get in trouble. <laughs> okay. Is there thank food you. there? Thank you. We're on the Will there be food? Let's go find some snacks. All right, Sophia, we're coming back to you with the carpet with amazing James Beard Foundation CEO, Claire Reichenbach. Ladies. We Again, are here. Color coordinated. Claire, we are here. Claire, Claire, tell me about your dress first off. It's a dress. It fits. I'm happy about that. What do you mean? So it's I heard... And colorful and joyful and celebratory, so I was trying to avoid the black and be more of a pop. This is stunning. I mean, it's I'm wearing stunning. black, but I'm still popping, right? You have, I, pop, but you have, you have the floral pop. Oh, okay, so I heard a little bird that said that you wear blue for all the restaurant and <laughs> I am a bit of a one-trick color pony. I would been, I've been diversifying. I was shimmering in silver for the for the media awards, but I'm back to true form now. Yeah. I mean, you look absolutely stunning. I see the blue earrings to match. Absolutely. So, look, turn to the camera. Turn to the camera. Turn. <laughs> love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. So this is really huge for me. I'm so thrilled to be here. Thank you know, you this is my very here. first yeah. restaurant and chef awards. My first. The first of many. The uh, first of many. But isn't it so funny that I'm doing the red carpet correspondence? This is my first. <laughs> I think it's so cool. Anyway, what are you the most excited about for tonight? I think this is just such a joyful coming together of our community to celebrate leaders in all the fields across all forms of culinary excellence. Um, and for me, this is the crescendo of our work during the year. And just seeing everybody come together is really, it's a very moving actually. Um, so yeah, I'm just looking, for a one, looking forward to a wonderful celebration. I'm so excited. So what is it like preparing for a weekend like this? Because this is not just today. I mean, all weekend awards have been happening, right? 
Yeah, as I said, this is, you know, the, the awards team are in gear for, for throughout the year. And this is really the, the, the crescendo point where it all comes together. We've had three, two wonderful celebrations thus far. You had the media awards on Saturday, our leadership awards yesterday, and now the finale with the restaurant chef award. I mean, look at the carpet. I mean, it's packed. I mean, it's it pretty is, incredible. It, and it is palpable, the excitement and enthusiasm. Yeah, it's really palpable and wonderful to see everybody in their glory. Uh, look, having their time in the sun. It really is. It's a very, very special evening. You can feel the energy, can't you? Absolutely. I mean, I'm absolutely thrilled to be here. You should feel so good. You should feel so proud. You really should. This is so incredible. Look at all of us. Some of us only get to see each other right I now know, today. I know. I know. This is the wonderful convening point, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Amazing. Right. Well, I mean, we hello. Are we going to cheers right now? Oh, my gosh. Let's do it. I think we're going to cheers. All right. Love it. Cheers to you. So the James Beard Awards ah. 2020. Oh, we and we have Where champagne we up here too. So let's keep the champagne flowing, shall we? It's our it's that time for our Moet moment with the amazing Chris Moon. Hello. Pleasure. Are you over the moon of what's happening today? <laughs> oh, I did that. Really? I, 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 let's cheers. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Ooh. I was gonna <laughs> You know, you know, I've been drinking a little we bit already. We just started, I swear to God. <laughs> Tell us how you're feeling about what the incredible things that have been happening in the industry this year. Uh, I just feel really inspired, I have to say. I mean, it's been a really difficult couple of years for the industry, as we all know. And so to be back in a place where we can celebrate those that are leading the industry forward, that are excelling at the top end of their craft, but also helping really create a more sustainable, more equitable, more inclusive, more... Um, a supportive industry it just feels like such a beautiful moment and so I just it's nice to be here to be able to celebrate tonight we were talking earlier about how meaningful it is to have this community that the James Beard Foundation really enables us to have what do you think how do you think the James Beard Foundation is evolving as the years go by significantly as you guys know I mean it's been such a journey that we've been on as an organization and I think that's really to reflect what's happening in the industry you know the industry has is grappling with a lot of issues and we are here to try to help lead the industry forward right um, this really should be a place where people can choose to have a career and have a successful supportive career and uh, demonstrate their talents and, and bring more beautiful food and hospitality into the world. And I think for us, we're trying to figure out how we help be a part of that positive change, how we help lead the industry forward. And ultimately with the Beard Awards, how we lift up the people who are leading the way to say, look, people are figuring it out. They're executing at the highest level and they're also really taking care of their people. And these are the people we want to celebrate. We can all do this together. And that's obviously, you know, it is a little bit turning the Titanic, right? Titanic is probably the wrong ship to use as a metaphor. <laughs> but it's turning a big ship that will not actually crash into an iceberg. Yeah. Uh, so how do you feel, like, about tonight? Tonight is obviously a celebration. It, we're, we're literally holding champagne. But how do you feel this actually moves that forward still? I mean, I think with all of the changes that we've made within the James Beard Awards, the process, the committee structure, the categories even that evolve every year, it's really meant to make sure that we are celebrating the people who are leading the path, right? Um, and this is meant to be a celebratory moment because we are obviously celebrating people who are executing at kind of the highest end of the craft, but we're also recognizing people who beyond that really support their communities, who take care of their teams. And I think the more that we can lift those people up, that we can shine a spotlight on those that are leading the industry forward, the more it shows others it can be done and hopefully leverages some of that influence to say, gosh, how can I take steps in that direction in my business, right? I'm making excellent food, but how can I think about my staff? How can I think about how I support my local community? And so hopefully by creating this broader stage, this spotlight, right, we're inspiring the industry to move forward. Well, Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thanks. Have a great a wonderful night. night. Since 1991, the James Beard Foundation Restaurant and Chef Awards has shined a spotlight on the people behind the food. Before chefs became celebrities, the gala gave our industry the red carpet treatment it so richly deserved. Since 2016, the Oscars of Food relocated to a city that's second to none, Sweet Home Chicago. Chicago has over 50 diverse neighborhoods with vibrant dining options. Cuisine that's pushing boundaries, driven by its residents. The awards made their Chicago debut back in 2016. 
Ming Tsai and Carla Hall were the co-host with the most. It's our most glamorous night of the year. The next year, Jesse Tyler Ferguson brought his brand of humor and love of food to a memorable night. I am not wearing pants. In fact, it was so nice, JTF joined us twice. You're back for seconds. And in 2021, Kwame Nwaje helped us regather for good after some time apart. How does it feel? We're back. And in 2022, the Beards returned to the Lyric Opera House of Chicago in grand fashion under the bright lights of a Monday night in June. Over the last eight years, Chicago has proudly served as the hub for our culinary community celebrating the awards. We've enjoyed the essence of its neighborhoods, partaken in its culture, and sampled the great foods from its esteemed chefs and restaurants while hosting our extended family far and wide. The secret of good cooking is first having a love of it. Wise words from the award's namesake, James Beard, who's probably looking on enjoying some deep dish pie in the sky, saying cheers to you, Chicago. Okay, a little bit of Chicago flavor. We have the unbelievable emerging chef from this hometown, Damar, pleasure to see you. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to be here. We're thrilled to have you. Now, how does it feel? I just need you to take a moment and really experience where we're at. We are in the place where your mentor won an award last year, and now you are nominated. Uh, it feels a little surreal. You know, I'm really happy to be here. I was happy to be here last year. Um, it's an amazing feeling. There's so much energy in the room, and I'm just trying to take the moment in. And Chef. how's that feeling? <laughs> it feels great. You know, I'm honored to be here. It feels really amazing. Chef, you spent so much of your career cooking in amazing fine dining restaurants, MK, Royster, but you've said that virtue is the first place where you really felt that not only were you using your skills and your creativity, but that where you could actually highlight the food that you grew up with. What's that like for you? Why is that uh, important to you? It's beautiful. You know, it's not only the first place where I could highlight food that I grew up eating and cooking, um, but it's the first place where I got to cook for people that look like me. Um, it, it feels really special, it feels really natural, um, and it feels a lot less like work than work used to feel like. Um, so it's, it's a really amazing time in my career right now. You have been mentored by someone really special, and you've said that you are really interested in continuing that leadership position in the industry. Why is that so important to you? Uh, you know, I think that it's really hard to see yourself doing something when you don't see anybody that looks like you're doing it. Um, and for 13 years now, Chef has been that example. Um, so I'm just trying to continue those examples because optics and visuals are important. And we're just trying to push that narrative forward. We are thrilled to have you. We are so excited for you for tonight and for everything that you're, you're accomplishing. Um, oh, oh! We have someone right oh. here. Oh. Chef Eric Williams, winner of Best Chef Great Lakes last year. And you know something about this guy. I do know a little bit about him. Um, Chef DeMar Brown is my CDC at Virtue, and we're really, really excited about tonight. What does it mean for you to have won the award last year, not just for yourself, not just for Chicago, but I think specifically for Southside Chicago, right? Because so many Chicago chefs do well at these awards, and I believe your, your restaurant is the first Southside restaurant to have won a Beard Award. So what does it mean for you to take that home for that community and also be standing here knowing that your protege may also win tonight as well. I think um, the Beard Awards represent opportunity, and it's a, it's a shining light on the many culinarians and, and restaurant operators that are working hard every day to produce under sometimes excruciating circumstances. And so it, it really feels good to me to be from the community, of the community, and to have a really talented chef like Damar um, on our team. So we're really excited. So last year, the party at Virtue, I heard, which is bonkers lit. What's the party going to be like tonight? Oh. You know, I don't know if we should talk about a party. It looks like it's about a thousand people here, so I, I, we, got... we, we may be signaling an opportunity to um, get about a thousand people on our block, but if it's any indication of what it was like last year, it's going to be a really, really great time. Um. It's already a great time. We are thrilled to have you both here. We're delighted to be here with you in Chicago, and best of luck tonight. Good luck to you both. Thank you. And the winner of Outstanding Chef, Mashama Bailey, the Gray.
for the past few days, I've been talking myself out of the remote possibility of my name being called and me coming up on this stage and accepting this award. All this excitement. <laughs> Today, a little black girl or a little black boy can see themselves as a future outstanding chef. They can see themselves in a space that they have never seen before and do what they cannot think is possible. And until just a few minutes ago, that was me. So thank you. What an incredible year you had last year. I am so thrilled to be talking to you, Mishama Bailey. Can you sort of talk to me about what it is to be back here after having such an incredible year last year? It feels very familiar, and I love seeing all the chefs that we all have similar goals and we're all like-minded and we love tradition. So it's really great to see um, some new faces and some of the old faces come back and celebrate such a honored tradition in our community. I love what you say familiar because it's so interesting. It's 2018 the nomination, mm -hmm. 2019 the win, and then of course pins down 2020, mm -hmm. 2021, mm -hmm. and then 2022. Mm -hmm. When you were walking up on that stage, like, I mean, just, just kind of take me back. Like, were you expecting that win? I was absolutely not expecting that win. And I think the um, sort of, I don't know, um, not negative, but the person in me felt like, you know what, I don't, I don't want to win. I want someone else to win. And then um, when they called my name, it, it felt surreal. I was literally shaking. And um, I think it's a great responsibility. And I think that it's a good position to be in as a black woman and as a black female chef in 2022, 23 and beyond. I think that I'm honored to be an example for people who have like goals like mine. I mean, Mishama, you changed my life with that speech, you know? <laughs> I'm a black cook as well. I'm also from Florida, represent the South, yes. you know? So, I mean, I rewatch that speech on YouTube all the time, you know? Like, I just want you to know from me to you, you really, I'm only one black girl, but I'm a black girl, and that speech really changed my life, you know? Do, you, do other people tell you that? I get that sometimes, and I get the fact that people are looking up to me, and I just really want to lead by example and say what I mean and mean what I say. Absolutely. So you're cooking tonight. I'm cooking tonight with a lot of help, but um, it's exciting. I think that my team, my chef Trevor Elliott and um, Christine Cottrell in Austin and Trevor's in Savannah, they're very excited to be here. And, you know, this is why we do it, so we can bring people along. Are you nervous to cook for this crowd? I'm nervous to cook for any crowd, except for my mama. <laughs> Feel that. Even my mama. Are you kidding? Maybe more so for my mama. Oh, my gosh. So what's on the menu tonight? We have some smoked lamb shoulder. We have a uh, ham aspic. And we also have a watermelon salad. Yeah, we're excited. I am so thrilled. I can't wait to eat all of it. Thank you so much for your time. Can I get a hug? Yes. yes. Thank you so much. Oh. Thank you so much, Mashama Bailey. My name is Matos Joffrey. It's hard to describe who I am because I can't always put it into a single sentence. It's hard to know why people follow you. But I've been writing recipes since 1973. I want to pass it on. Some people will tell you, oh, I don't tell them everything. <laughs> Otherwise, they'll be as good as I am. I never have that thought because I want them to be as good. I want them to be better. I want to make them understand what makes a recipe successful. And I want them to do the same. Madhu Joffrey joins Martin Yan, Patrick O'Connell, Paula Wolford, and Nora Puyon, the last five winners of this prestigious award. Unfortunately, Madhur Jaffe could not be here with us to celebrate, but we have another Lifetime Achievement winner with Sophia on the red carpet. Incredible. Jessica B. Harris. You don't understand. I really am. My name's Sophia, by the way. I was there. Oh, you want me to start again, John? John? We'll start again. Three, two, 
One. Hi, everybody. So I am here with the legend that is Jessica B. Harris. I am so thrilled. Oh, my God, don't laugh. Thank You're you. a legend. I know, man. Not to me. Oh, my God. You're, what? I see what I look like when I wake up. Oh, and you look like a legend to me. <laughs> okay. I was there in 2019 at the Media Awards. Oh, okay. And I cried when you, sp when you spoke. Thank like, you. high on the hog, everything. You're just so... You have to know you're a Thank legend. You. Yeah? No, 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 no. You shouldn't know those things. Oh, okay. Okay, that's fair. I'm going to give you that. I'm going to give you that. Okay, so we're here at 2023 Restaurant and Chef Awards. How do you feel about it? Uh, wow. Absolutely wow. I mean, it, it's it's pretty incredible because I was probably at the first Beard Awards, or certainly in the first 10, and it's such a swivel. It's such a change. It's so amazing. Things are just incredible. And then this whole Chicago red carpet experience is like, oh, my God. You know, I was like, wow, Chicago is really giving us a red carpet right now, really? right? I was at the Beards in 2010. It was at Lincoln Center. There was a red carpet experience, but it wasn't this. So. This is pretty incredible, right? Pretty incredible. Anything in particular you're excited about tonight? I'm so excited. I called her earlier today, Madhur Jaffrey, getting the Lifetime Achievement Award. It is so amazing, and I love Madhur. I love Madhur so much. She's not going to be here tonight, but for her to be honored. Oh, I know. I know. I just, and she's going to be watching on live stream because I'm, I hope I made sure that somebody gave her all the instructions. But she is such, she's an icon. She really is an icon. She's an icon. Now, she's a legend. Oh, my God. But again, she probably, she probably wouldn't say it just like you. Exactly. Thank exactly. You so Thank you so much, Sophia. Thank you. I am just so, I can't even, I'm, I can't even, can I have a hug? Please. Oh, I do hugs. Thank you so much, Thank Jessica. You. Have a great night. Thank you. Food means power, nourishment, sustenance. To be able to even to grow your own food gives you that sense of belonging. And so food for me is very powerful and it should be a right for all people. So Black Farmer Fund, we're a 501c3 community investment fund. Our mission is to nurture and grow community wealth and health by investing in black agricultural systems of the Northeast. Community power is total power, is strength, is awesome, and it moves mountains, it moves work. Olivia, Mama Kay, welcome to the Red Carpet Show, congratulations on receiving your Humanitarian of the Year Award. How does it feel to be here? We are so excited being here. This is great. This has been marvelous. How do you feel? I feel amazing. Being here with Mama Kay is an honor, so we're just excited to celebrate. Now, why do people call you Mama Kay? Oh, because I've been doing this work for over 40 years, and I'm embracing it, so I'm everyone's mama. Oh, that's the ultimate auntie. I know. I love, I love being able to call you Mama Kay. So you're here representing the Black Farmer Fund, and uh, I don't know if everyone knows this, but black farmers have experienced just devastating land loss, right? I believe over 70% of all the land the black farmers owned 100 years ago, they no longer own because of discriminatory lending, racist, systemic racist practices. What does Black Farmer Fund do to fight against that? Well, we focus on building up communities and making sure that they can thrive and creating an equitable food system. So we provide people with financing, programs, technical assistance, all really towards building community wealth and health. Um, there are a lot of farmers that we know who are thriving and doing amazing things. We want to be able to create community around them so that way they can continue serving the food system and ultimately the hospitality system. I, I'm really curious, because people are watching this all around the world, what can people do to help you all in the amazing work that you're doing? I want people to understand that when we talk about black farming, black agriculture, this is part of American history. And so where we see that the black farm is starting to disappear, we want people to make sure that they support the work that we're doing because we want to make sure that the food system is fair and just for all. So if you're out there, please support the work that we're doing, support black farmers, black businesses, because again, we're all part of American history. So obviously you have won the Humanitarian of the Year Award, which is wonderful. Obviously, you don't do it for awards, for accolades. What to you will mean you succeeded? What will you see when you know you've succeeded? What does success look like, did you say? What will, what will you see when you know you succeeded in your mission? Well, so currently, the uh, racial wealth gap for farmers in New York State, black farmers are making negative $906, while other farmers are making 42000 So we want to be able to see that divide shrink 
and with the farmers and food businesses that we are working with, we want to see that they are profitable and thriving despite all the challenges. Well, the 2023 Humanitarians of the Year, thank you so much for being here, and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for doing your work. Olivia and Mama Kay have joined this illustrious list of James Beard Award winners. It is truly remarkable to have dedicated people like this in our culinary community from coast to coast. Now I want to throw it down to the red carpet again where Sophia has a wonderful guest with her, Carla Hall. Sitting here with the incredible Carla Hall. Please give me a spin. Give me a spin. <gasps> Stunning, and the hair, come on. Carla, tell me who you're wearing. I, I know I should know who I'm wearing. I know, I know, I'm the worst. But can I tell you who my stylist is? Because my stylist is Ashley Michelle Miller, and she is all about helping, especially chefs, be comfortable in their clothes. And I knew I was gonna get this question. And I was here at the end of the line, and I said, oh, great. I, I'm so sorry to do that to you. Oh, darn. I mean, I wanted to know because I'm sorry, but the pantsuit and the all white. And I mean, like, there's, a, you guys, there is like a cape train and the buttons. Oh, my God. What? Oh, I'm not hearing you. Oh, it's called um, Sophia. The designer is Sophia. Sophia. I'm wearing Sophia. We had to go through some motions to get there, but there we are. I love it. It's so awesome to just meet you in person. Like Thank I'm, you. I've been the biggest fan forever. I'm a New Yorker, so I'm like. Thank you. Anyway, how does it feel to be here, Restaurant Chef Words? You're like legacy, you know. It's so exciting to be here. I'm I'm so excited to see the the young newbie chefs, the old um, seasoned chefs. Um, I, last time I was here, I was hosting and I fell. So this time I'm wearing my wings. It's amazing. Oh, it was still good. It was still good. I fell like a champ. I mean, it was amazing. Um, but. Also, I just think that after this little hiatus, forced hiatus, the chefs are so exciting right now because they made it to the other side and they are here. So exciting, so young, so diverse, yeah. so interesting. Oh my God, you said it. So young, so diverse, so interesting. And, and literally we are seeing culture, cultural history, right, in the making. In front of us. In front of us. We're, we're seeing it all right here, and it's so exciting. I couldn't agree more. I'm so thrilled to be here myself. Just I'm just I'm literally just sitting in it like I can't even believe I'm here. So give me a hug. Uh, and you have so much fun. You. Listen, I try, I really did try today. As a cook, I tried. You did it. You did <laughs> awesome. It. Thank safari. you, Carla. I love it. <laughs> Thank you, Carla. Well, I'm a little jelly of Sophia getting to talk to Carla Hall because we love her, and we also love. The Outstanding Chefs of California. So the last five winners of this award are John Shook and Vinny Dotolo, Corey Lee, Dominique Cren, Michael Chimarusi, and Brandon Jew. Jew, you are here with us, back at the Lyric. How does it feel to be back here after the epic year you had last year? Uh, just so many good vibes here. Uh, this, this building, this community, um, this night is just is such a special occasion. So it's it's getting like goosebumps just being in here again. But um, all the good vibes here, yeah. Right on. So last year you had an epic year, like Neelu just said. Like you. Because you won not just one Beard Award, but two on two separate nights. You won for your cookbook and the Media Awards, and then you won Best Chef California. Uh, to ask you an impossible question, which are you more proud of? <laughs> that's, what? that's like asking you which baby you love more. Oh. Tell me, which one? Which oh child gosh. would you give up? I mean, I feel like, I mean, I will just say, like, the California, best, best chef California. I had been nominated a couple of years, and so, you know, every year you're stacked up with just amazing chefs, and um, I, I feel like that one is, is just really hard to know if you're going to win or not. And um, not to say that I, I knew at all about the cookbook, but the cookbook one was like, I feel like it was just such a small group, and it was my first time, so I had less, like, maybe feeling like, you know, it was going to, I didn't think it was going to win, so I felt really excited about that one, and um, 
different different teams for different different awards. So I just was really proud for, for both for both of both teams. Yeah. I want to ask you um, r related to the work the, your your whole work, which is represented by the book and represented by Mr. Jews. What do you think has changed in the time that you since you opened Mr. Jews in San Francisco or in general in terms of people's understanding mm. of the food that you're creating? Yeah. I, I feel like this this wave of Asian American like understanding of just our expression of, of our um, our story um, just I feel like it's it, the really like the, the it's gotten so much wider um, the understanding um, and the possibilities the opportunities uh, it's just really amazing to see um, these last couple of years how how this this wave of um, just amazing people like Francis has, has really. I mean, this love know, fest. This is a wonderful opportunity yeah. to talk about me. I, I love you, man. Oh, so, wait, you I'm know. right and here. You, okay, thank you. Neil, you're yeah. So, you know, I think we're all trying to, um, just just really like have the have have like the opportunities, and I think this this couple last years, I, I really feel. Um, just really fortunate yeah we're so i mean we are all fortunate to have you we're grateful that you're here Thanks. have an amazing night thank, and thank you. you for talking to us yeah of course yeah see you guys tonight Wait, hold. all right well we wouldn't be here without james beard himself i mean this is this is the man who started it all and we are lucky that he did because this awards is really a celebration of him as much as it is anything else yeah, and his legacy is someone who, you know, like, look, James Beard was active in 1946, right? He had a TV show in 1946 about cooking. And what we have to remember about what American cooking was in 1946 was that it was, like, World War II, it was canned food was the future, it was processed food, fresh, you know, fresh food was not something we really wanted to deal with. We wanted frozen food, we wanted canned food, we wanted convenience more than anything else. And so James Beard was the person who stood up and said, hey, guess what? Remember cooking? It's really good. Remember food? It's really great. Food is great. Yes, food is great. I think the fact that we are seeing not only this passionate community of chefs, but this passionate community of home cooks who are following us right now online and who are dedicated to what we are passionate about, which is food is great. And like, and home cooks now have such like so many millions of different ways of like expressing that passion yes. and like and 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 taking it in, like taking in new information, new knowledge. Like they're watching you cook on your streams, and they're like, "Oh they my sure God, <laughs> Sophia Rowe is the person who like taught me how to cook." Mm -hmm. Or you know, in my work as a cookbook publisher, as a cookbook editor, I hear so many people saying, "Oh my God, I've never got into food the way I have reading Absolutely. cookbooks and you know, reading magazines and, and watching you like." I think that the thing is that what, what brings us all together and what I'm so relieved by being on the other side of the pandemic is the fact that we all want to celebrate food in every single way. And it is so enriching, right? And we, we can talk about it all day, every day. And the people who bring it to life for us in restaurants are really the heart and soul of our communities. And Absolutely. so, I mean, when we talk to the humanitarians, when we talk to the leaders, this is really meaningful thoughtful stuff that's happening yes. but all around this one topic that we all we all can't fight about which is food it's so true i just i think my favorite thing is i get to see everybody head to toe style substance all of it you know what i mean it's so cool it's so cool to be able to see all my heroes in every single way you know what i mean so we i, I you hear that which means the night is is far from done for us. It's only getting started. In a few moments, we'll be going upstairs to our perch on the third floor of the beautiful Lyric Opera House of Chicago to watch as the James Beard medallions are presented to our esteemed friends in the industry. During that time, Francis, Sophia, and I will be sharing our thoughts with you as the winners are announced. We'll be back with you shortly. On behalf of Sophia Rowe, Francis Lamb, and myself, we thank you for watching and bid you farewell from the Red Carpet Show. The 2023 James Beard Awards, presented by Capital One, start now.
to me. Welcome to the James Beard Awards 2023 edition. Oh yeah, you probably know me best from 20 odd seasons and many spin-offs of the James Beard Award winning show Top Chef. It's true, I've been on TV a long time. In fact, in case you're wondering, I was seven when we started shooting the first season back in 2005. You can do the math. I am a super taster, oh yes. Even from the earliest age, I could taste any sandbox and identify the terroir. And on that note, I wanted to just take a minute while I had all of you in the room to apologize. I want to apologize to the restaurant industry at large for being partially responsible for creating a generation of total monsters who sit down at all your fine restaurants and say shit like, that ramp butter needs more acid, or my sous vide scallop with sauce grabiche could use a little more umami, or the worst, they use the term flavor profile. I'm sorry, I have never used that term in my life. And as you've already gathered, tonight is not about the negative. It is about celebrating chefs and the industry that we love so much. And as you've probably gathered, we're doing things a little differently this year. It's not just me up here guiding you through the festivities. There's a whole crew tonight, a party of hosts, a company to keep you company, a gang, a squad, a tribe. First, I'll start us off. Then, my friend and Top Chef alum, Eric Ajapong, who brings a cornucopia of African and diasporic perspectives and flavors to his cooking and his activism, will take us through part two. He'll be followed by Esther Choi, Iron Chef finalist and apostle of Korean cuisine. And finally, we'll pass the mic to the original omnivore, a man whose heart is half Jewish bubby and half lumberjack, and all good for, and all parts advocate for good food and good work, Mr. Andrew Zimmern. It's a good crew. Think of it a little like an Olympic relay. We'll each get our moment to shine, but really, it's about the team. After all, we're here tonight to celebrate, as I said, the greatest and the greatness of American cuisine. Think about it. When you sit down in a restaurant or at a fabulous meal at home, the first bite you take is the culmination of a story that almost always starts many miles from your fork a long chain of events put in motion by hundreds of human hands and minds connecting part by part to bring that bite into being. So while we honor excellence and high achievement in restaurants and food media, we also bring awareness to a simple truth. Great food is a collaborative effort. Without taking an iota of credit away from our winners tonight, I also want to acknowledge that each medallion bestowed is the outcome of a lifetime of learning and most of all of teamwork. And that teamwork goes on 24-7, 365. So with this in mind, let's put our hands together first and foremost for the people growing, picking, and transporting our food. For the cooks, the bussers, the dishwashers, and the servers who make the James Beard award-winning award dishes appear on all our restaurant plates. Thank you. 
And let us not forget the brilliant team that has come together from all parts of this country to cook for, to cook for all of you this evening. There they are, I think. There they are. <laughs> Thank you so much, Chef. We love you. We'll see them at Union Station later. Now, let's get this show on the road. Please welcome Chief Executive Officer Claire Reichenbach and Awards Committee Chair and Trustee Tanya Holland. Everybody, and thank you so much for being here tonight to celebrate our wonderful culinary community and everyone paving the way forward for our larger food system. This is a joyful occasion and it is such a pleasure to come together to savour it with you all. You know, we all have choices about how we want to show up every day and how we want to affect the way our society evolves. Given the scale and influence of this industry, positive change that you make can truly have a profound ripple effect. And we are so inspired daily by your commitment to using your platforms for good. The James Beard Awards are the foundation's most powerful change lever, and we are committed to making them a force for good, one that recognizes excellence both on and beyond the plate. And I've said it before, we are about raising people up, not calling them out. And we're here tonight to recognize your talent, creativity, culinary prowess, and leadership. This industry is always striving for excellence, and I congratulate all of you tonight. Tanya. Thanks, Claire. Hi, everyone. This is the second James Beard Awards following immense transformations we made to our mission and programs three years ago. As chair of the awards committee, I remain tremendously proud of our progress. That's why I join my fellow board members and committee members in continuing to volunteer our time and energy to support the growth of an industry where we can all thrive. When I was starting out, I had the privilege of dining at Dookie Chase in New Orleans and spending time with Chef Leah Chase. <laughs> Thanks. And I'm so, I'm so grateful that she got her flowers, you know, later in life, but she got them. Anyway, she gave me a lot of advice, but one thing has always stuck with me. She said, be prepared to get a lot of criticism in this industry and work with it. You will make mistakes. The important thing is where your heart is and how you move on. The universe knows I've made numerous mistakes. <laughs> she, I opened and closed five restaurants in 14 years. I learned a lot. Uh, I really know what to do and what not to do. Uh, through my experiences, I've come to learn that what drives me is a vision of how to make this industry better and our work as meaningful as it can be. That has required me to get comfortable with being uncomfortable because that's the only way that change happens. And it is happening. Just look around you right now. When I was on the stage at these awards 21 years ago, I didn't see many people who look like me. Now we have a Hawaiian female restaurateur, a Haitian gay male chef, an indigenous female chef, a queer black wine educator, and on and on. Um, and that's, that's to be commended. It's difficult and it's rare for many people to just get to the level where they have the visibility to receive the nod for a James Beard Award. As independent operators, we never have enough resources, enough support, and that's especially true if you're a person of color, even more so if you're a woman. And yes, things are changing. The James Beard Foundation has helped us get here and will continue to do so as we work to make our industry even more inclusive and welcoming. Programs like Chef Bootcamp for Policy and Change, of which I am a twice alum, the Women's Entrepreneur Leadership Program, of which I am an alum, and now Platform at Pier 57 in New York, and on and on. We are here to celebrate excellence in food and service, but also excellence in purpose and process. And we're learning as we go. It's not always smooth, but that doesn't mean we're not on the right path. I mean, if any of you have ever had a misfire, like, you know, oh, chef, I fired too many salmons. You know what it's like. Uh, but now it's time to get the show started. So say it with me. I'll say good food, and you say for good, okay? Good food! For good! <laughs> all right, great. It's going to be a great night. Thank you all.
Thank you, Claire and Tanya. Okay, should we do this? Let's do this. Our first award, oh, I get chills when I think about it, has really become a path marker for the bright talents at or near the beginning of their culinary journeys. It's the Emerging Chef Award presented by San Pellegrino Sparkling Mineral Water. And it's given to those who show the promise of great contributions to their community over the long term. To help me announce this year's nominees and winner, please welcome Anna Mandelbaum from San Pellegrino. Thank you. It's an honor to be here with all of you. On behalf of the team at San Pellegrino, we would like to share how proud we are to be up on this stage, joining the James Beard Foundation in supporting rising talent, as well as established ex excellence in the industry. It's our hope that one day we'll see one of our San Pellegrino Young Chef Academy competitors up on this list. But in the meantime, and without further ado, the nominees for the 2023 Emerging Chef category presented by San Pellegrino Sparkling Mineral Water are Damar Brown, Virtue, Rashida Holmes, Bridgetown Roti, Serene Mbai, Dakar Nola, Charlie Mitchell, Clover Hill, Amanda Showman, Her Place Supper Club. And the award goes to, I told you I'd scream my head off, Damar Brown Virtue! Welcome to the James Beard Award. Welcome to the James Beard Award Gala. Damar Brown was just announced as the emerging chef for this year. I'm here with Francis Lamb and Sophia Rowe. We have a bird's eye view of the festivities. What does this mean for Damar Brown? I mean, life changing. It's got to be incredible, especially to come get this award on the stage where his own mentor won an award last year. And if you watch him on Chef Chef, you know you love his creativity and Absolutely. his calm confidence. Mm -hmm. But when you eat his food, you're like, man, that is the greatest gumbo. Oh, he's well deserved. He's strutting. Wow. So. All right. Y'all got to give me a minute. <laughs> All right. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to thank God. Um, because it's truly a blessing. Thank you to the James Beard Foundation for not only recognizing me for your continued support of inclusivity in our industry. To my fellow nominees in my category, I uniquely admire each of you. To all the nominees this evening, it was simply an honor to be named next to all of you. To my team who stands beside me daily, I wish that each of you were standing beside me now because we achieved this together. To my girlfriend, Taylor, who supports me through all my tunnel vision craziness, I love you. To the women who raised me, my mother, Trina, my grandmother, Arlene, and my Aunt Inga, they were my first examples of kindness, generosity, and patience, which all happen to be virtues. I can't thank them enough for the continued gifts they give me. I've always felt that it's extremely difficult to see yourself doing something if you don't see anyone who looks like you doing it. So I'd like to thank Chef Eric Williams. For the last 13 years, you have been that example for me. I stand because you stood. Thank you. Good night. Congratulations, Damar. Now, we have a full house tonight, and that's a lovely thing, but there's also a huge audience watching the live stream from home. And I wanna say to all of you out there tuning in remotely, please don't forget you can tag this event on Facebook or Instagram at hashtag JBFA and help spread the love for your friends, your colleagues, and your favorite nominees and winners. So go ahead, 
Do it now. I want to see all the posts, all of you. All right. The next two awards go to culinary artists whose works, whether savory or sweet, tend to emerge from an oven and are remembered in our imaginations long after we gobble them up. To announce the next category, please welcome a woman who never forgets a truly inspired bite, my dear friend Carla Hall. Good vibes. You know I love good vibes, love and all that stuff. Um, and I love being back on this stage to help celebrate the limitless talent in our community. The universe is expanding at only a slightly faster rate that's the list of culinary wonder, wonders that you all conjure each year. And the next awards are for experts in a realm so varied and vast there's no way to encompass the whole thing in a single phrase. So, to all you brioche ballers and souffle savants, cook me cognoscenti and maidens of marae, emperors of the empanada and queens of the cronut. This one's for you. The nominees for Outstanding Pastry Chef or Baker are... Veronica Bakima, Veronica's Pastry Shop. <laughs> Elaine Oikimpang Benz, Café Mochico. <laughs> Vince Fogtong, Abaca. Margarita Mansky, Republique. Sean McKenzie, Café Series. Margarita Mansky, Republic. Wow. This is amazing. That's incredible. Could you imagine being Margarita Mansky? Like, having a place that is literally in Nancy Stillington's original La Brea Bakery space and being so freaking good that people don't even know that. So iconic. The fact that she is kind of like the Susan Lucci of these awards, right? The she fifth is, nomination. It's a lot of nominations, finally. But every time, like truly every time she comes here, like it's like she has a whole new side of her pastry life to show for it. From her French patisserie to yes. like the most incredible coconut buco pie at her oh. Filipino place. And now she has a new Michelin star tasting menu restaurant that she has with her husband. She's, she is epic, and this is well-deserved. She right. absolutely served on the red carpet also, just saying. <laughs> served. Finally, finally for Marguerite Mansky. Okay, I am not Marguerite Mansky. She is my boss. I love my boss. And this is a thrill. Hi, Marge. Thank you for having me here today. Okay, my notes. Thanks. Oh, God. Chef Damar, hard act to follow. Thank you for ruining my life. Okay, uh, what an honor. Obviously, this is. Marge wish she could be here today. She would have loved to be here this evening, but had to return to Asia on a personal matter. Um, this is an incredible honor to me and the team and to her and her kids. I know that she would be thrilled to be standing here today. Um, yeah, cheers to the nominees. Way to go. This is a big deal. Thanks for having me. You're amazing. real life like exit stage left and I really got to just say that just now. Uh, all right, so we've seen a lot of new energy going into a kind of business that is a keystone in any community, the neighborhood bakery. Permanent or pop-up, delivery or takeout, vegan, plant-based, no gluten, there's a bake shop for truly every need now, which makes the eating wonderful. But picking a winner? Super, super hard. Every spot on this list is special. So I'm pleased to announce the nominees for Outstanding Bakery presented by Guinness. 
And just in case you're wondering what Guinness has to do with baking, well, during the pandemic, the legendary brewer turned its grain processing facilities to a new purpose, baking bread for those in need. Now they're opening a tap room that doubles as a bakery right here in Chicago. Uh-huh, you're welcome. And here are this year's nominees. Angelo Brocato, ice cream and confectionery. La Casita Bake Shop. Kuluntu Bakery. Yoli Tortilleria. Zach the Baker. And the winner is Yoli Tortilleria. This is amazing. Incredible, incredible Mexican woman. Wow. Gorgeous. I love so that cool. this is a new award. They've never awarded Outstanding Bakery, and the first one to get it is a tortilleria. Yes. So uh, cool. we're, we're living in like an era of great bread in our country right now, but a great tortilla that's made from like heirloom corn. Like if you've never had one before, it will blow your mind. It's got floral flavors. It's like elastic texture. And Marisa's family is from Sonora too, so they make those incredibly paper thin flour tortillas oh also. Oh my God, but you can smell. She's like making that family proud. This is such a major moment. Wow. There's nothing like a good tortilla. I'm sorry. You're like, you know? Wow. Also, serving. What about that? I wrote this just in case, so I'm glad I did now. Uh, thank you. Yoli was born out of dealing where life had taken us. We were in a very weird space. We're reaching 40s. And more than 20 years ago, I lost both of my parents. I have now lived most of my life without them. Baking became our therapy, a way to connect and honor my ancestors in the middle of North America. Thank you for the opportunity and thank you for helping us honor the very humble tortilla. Gracias totales. Gracias totales to the Beard Foundation, to our friends, family, our children, Santiago y Siena. They put up so much with us, all their crazy schedules, and our city, Kansas City. Without you, we would, be, we would not be here. So thank you so much. Muchas gracias. And now it is my honor to welcome a guest who makes it his business to know who's who and what's next in Chicago and everywhere around this, this great state of Illinois. Please welcome Governor J.B. Pritzker. It is great to be here tonight, and thank you very much to Gail Simmons for that very kind introduction. And good evening, everyone. I'm thrilled to be here at the Civic Opera House alongside our great mayor, Brandon Johnson, the, the CEO of the James Beard Foundation, Claire Reichenbach, chair of the James Beard Foundation Awards Committee, Tanya Holland, President and CEO of the Illinois Restaurant Association, Sam Toya. And President and CEO of Choose Chicago, Lynn Osmond, for this annual James Beard Foundation Awards. For more than 30 years, the James Beard Foundation Awards have been one of the most prestigious honors in the culinary and food media industries. And I'm honored to take part in this celebratory weekend, uh, recognizing all of those who are pushing American food culture forward. Since 2015, we've been proud to host the James Beard Foundation Awards right here in the greatest food city in the nation.
And it's no surprise, Chicago boasts one of the most vibrant, diverse, and yes, mouthwateringly delicious food scenes in the world. Whether you're grabbing a quick slice of deep dish pizza at a local pizza shop or dining at one of our many Michelin star establishments, there is something for everyone here in the Windy City. To all of the 2023 honorees, to the nominees, to the winners, I know it's taken years and years of hard work to get to this very moment. So on behalf of the great state of Illinois, congratulations on your extraordinary achievement and a huge thank you to Choose Chicago and to the Illinois Restaurant Association for their stewardship of this invaluable partnership. And with that, it is my pleasure to introduce the President and CEO of Choose Chicago, Lynn Osmond. Lynn? Thank you, Governor. I'm so proud and happy to be here. The James Beards Awards are an anchor event for Chicago's culinary community every year. We know how special our restaurant scene is, but it's a great honor to feel the recognition from the James Beard Foundation and bring this celebration to our wonderful city again. And Chicago has a great deal more to celebrate right now. We recently inaugurated a brand new leader and he is with us here tonight. Please help me welcome to the stage our new mayor, Chicago Mayor Brandon Johnson. Well, good evening, everyone. And how about this amazing moment where so many people get to hang out in the greatest city in the world. I'm talking about the city of Chicago. The First Lady and I are so excited to be here for the James Beard Awards. Thank you to the hosts, the sponsors, the many restaurants and hospitality leaders who have joined us for this evening. And thank you for participating in these awards that continue to celebrate the contributions of the culinary industry around the country. There are so many reasons why we all love Chicago. And of course, one of those reasons it's the food. From the iconic Chicago-style hot dogs, beef sandwiches, we even have vegan beef sandwiches in the city of Chicago now, <laughs> and to the pizza, and of course the five-star, the fine dining. I'm talking about we know how to do it in Chicago. The way I was told growing up, we know how to put our foot in it. That's how great the food is in the city of Chicago. It really is the soul of Chicago. It's our food. And of course, for the historic family-owned institutions to neighborhood gyms, this town has every kind of cuisine and flavor imaginable. Now, I will be remiss if I did not recognize that when you go to Virtue, I can certainly vouch for the fried salmon sticks. You got to check them out. Congratulations, brother. There is no better place than Chicago to host the James Beard Awards. And I want to welcome all of you to this beautiful city. I also want to thank the James Beard Foundation for choosing Chicago as the site of this fabulous celebration of our country's restaurant industry, as well as the amazing chefs and restaurateurs that make it possible. The chefs that are being honored tonight are all driven by a unique passion for their work that comes through in every single bite. Our reputation for food helps draw millions of visitors here each year, thereby strengthening our economy and our entire city. We celebrate tonight by making sure that our visitors continue to come back and to continue to enjoy the amazing food here in the city of Chicago. And finally, as mayor, I'm committed to working with our city's restaurant industry and making sure that these vital spaces have everything they need to thrive. You're the heart of the city, no doubt about it. And I celebrate and, up and uplift this important industry. And in closing, I want to congratulate all of tonight's awardees, nominees, and winners, especially the Chicago restaurants and chefs 
Thank you for sharing your talent with the people of Chicago and our visitors who come here from all over the globe to try our food. I also want to thank again the James Beard Foundation for continuing the celebration right here in the city of Chicago. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Mayor Johnson. As a sommelier and founder of the Hughes Society, our next presenter is an award-winning advocate for more black, brown, and indigenous equity in the wine industry. Please welcome Tahira Habibi. Thank you, Gail. It is such a pleasure to be here again. And let me start really by saying um, thank you to my daughter, Sam. I love you. Thank you for letting mommy travel once again. <laughs> um, the main challenge we face in the wine world is creating more equitable and diverse communities, which is very close to my heart. I know this is a little bit funny coming from me, but I'm actually really happy to see the foundation placing more spotlight on other beverages that are not wine. I can talk to you all night about a beautiful temperillo or a gorgeous champagne, but what about an artisanal kombucha? Or that small batch hachi, hochi, <laughs> hochicha, or an aged mezcal, or a masterfully made sake cocktail? Or what about the floral essence of a great mocktail? When it comes to beverages, there are a whole universe to love alongside wine. With that in mind, the nominees for Outstanding Wine and Other Beverages are... Coat, Lazy Bear, Nancy's Hustle, Ototo, Spencer. Toto. Wow, this is so cool. Wow, I am absolutely thrilled. So here's the thing, one of my biggest insecurities was not having much sake knowledge. Uh -huh. So a friend of mine actually gifted me with their monthly sake program. Uh -huh. And now I feel like, yes, my palate has changed, my life has changed, but so is my drinking habits. <laughs> like now I'm sake informed, you don't even know. I highly recommend this. So Ototo is, they have a sake club. Yes. I'm part of it. You're in the club. Yes, I'm in the club. I get sake every month in the Sophie club. Sophia's in the club. I'm in the club. It was gifted to me from a friend. That's amazing. Yeah, it's really, really cool. It's actually changed my life. Because pre previously, I really wasn't a sake drinker. And now I'm, now I'm, I'm like, I kind of know myself a little bit. I, changing lives. <laughs> yes, friend. Let's talk about that, changing lives. This is a little overwhelming, um, but just, so honored to be here. Um, it was such a surprise to be nominated to see that the foundation had chosen to expand the category this year to recognize sake, um, such a special beverage that sometimes doesn't always get the spotlight that I think it deserves. So we're just truly honored um, to have been included. Um, I wouldn't be here without my absolutely incredible team um, who show up every single day and tell the stories of these amazing sakes and our brewers and memorize a bunch of Japanese vocabulary and just make everything fun and personal and accessible. Um, my partner, Charles Namba, who has always been our number one supporter and supports all my harebrained ideas for our beverage program and also makes all the incredible food that makes the sake just taste that much better. And then of course to our brewers in Japan and here in the US who put all their blood, sweat and tears into this incredible beverage. Just like restaurants, sake brewing is really a, a labor of love and it's just very meaningful for me to see it honored like this today. Thank you so much. Now, if you're really lucky, you get to enjoy your favorite beverage in a setting that matches the vibes with the drinks. Whether it's a neighborhood bar or a highbrow cocktail place or a tiny cafe 
or your favorite restaurant, an excellent bar program is something to be celebrated. For Outstanding Bar, presented by Hilton, here are the nominees. Bar Leather Apron. Drastic Measures. Garagiste Wine Room. Merchant. Las Ramblas. Rob Roy. And the winner is Bar Leather Apron. So exciting. Wow. This is absolutely awesome. So I was working on a show in Hawaii and everybody recommended Bar Leather Apron for the best cocktail. But see, here's the deal. Not much. You know, like I don't drink spirits really, you know? So I can say, I could definitely say, while I haven't had a spirit, they make the best alcohol free my time. Look at that leg he's wearing. He's <laughs> bringing Honolulu to the James Beard stage. He's so definitely cool. a Aloha, everyone. Mahalo, and thank you for having us. Well, we wrote this down just in case this beautiful moment happened, but mahalo to the James Beard Foundation for, uh, for this honor, and congratulations to all of the 2023 nominees. Um, also, a shout out to all our friends' bars who equally deserve this award and out there uh, sharing our craft. Um, you know, when we started Bar Leather Apron seven plus years ago, uh, we didn't do it in, uh, to chase any awards or anything like that. We just wanted to show and share um, the world, along with our friends in the industry, that we could, our small island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean could do something special. And we put our heads down and did what we did with the help of our family, our friends, all of our guests and supporters, uh, showing everyone back home in Hawaii, you know, the keiki, and everyone coming up in the industry that anything's possible. So believe and keep going. Mahalo, everyone. Thank you very much. Please welcome the James Beard Foundation's President and Chief Operating Officer, Chris Moon. Well, good evening, everybody. Happy Pride. It's really... Thank you. I did this for you. It's lovely to be back in Chicago with all of you. I want to begin by thanking some very special partners that make this awards possible. First of all, our Board of Trustees, which is led by our Board Chair, Nancy Lukic. Thank you. All of our sponsors, especially our presenting sponsor at Capital One, and our hosts at Choose Chicago and the Illinois Restaurant Association. And as in any restaurant, what we make happen at the James Beard Foundation is a measure of teamwork. Over the last couple of years, our dedicated staff have collaborated on the creation of Platform by JBF, our new show kitchen and event space at Pier 57 in New York City. Come check it out. I'm also thrilled to announce that the Foundation recently joined the U.S. Department of State in relaunching the Diplomatic Culinary Partnership. The American Culinary Corps is a group of over 80 culinary professionals who will participate in programs and events all around the world. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken recently said, the best diplomacy often takes place over a meal. I'll let him tell you more as he sent a message for all of us here today. Enjoy. Thank you. I'm thrilled to join you in celebrating and congratulating the outstanding nominees and winners of the 2023 James Beard Foundation Awards. For decades, this ceremony has highlighted talented chefs, bakers, bartenders, advocates, and experts from every corner and every cuisine of the United States. These awards not only spotlight the remarkable diversity and ingenuity of America's culinary landscape, they also tell our nation's story. Our culinary traditions reflect where we come from and what we cherish. And our menus showcase America's melting pot with all its extraordinary flavors. That's what makes American food and the people behind it a vital part of how we connect with the world. When we share our cuisines with people from other countries, they learn something about us that transcends the divisions of geography and language. And when Americans try foods from other places, we get a taste of their cultures and a window into their history. As a diplomat, I found that sharing a meal with my colleagues often leads to new conversations and new connections that could only happen around a dining table, not a conference table. That's why the State Department has made culinary diplomacy part of our foreign policy to build bridges through food, 
what James Beard called the universal common ground. We're teaming up with his foundation to do just that. Earlier this year, the State Department and the James Beard Foundation came together to relaunch the American Culinary Corps. More than 80 chefs and bakers are acting as citizen diplomats, promoting American businesses and cuisines abroad. Just recently, the South Korean president came to Washington, D.C., and a Culinary Corps chef and a James Beard Award winner, Edward Lee, prepared the White House State Dinner. Edward is Korean-American, and his menu celebrated the natural fusion of Korean and American flavors, and what he calls the story of his life. Maryland crab cakes with gochujang vinaigrette, a banana split with denjang caramel. In this year's award winners, and in kitchens across America, there are professional chefs and home cooks alike who are using food to tell the stories of their lives. And by bringing their history and heritage to their plates, they're helping write the next chapters of our shared American cookbook. Our country and our world are much richer and more flavorful for it. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Secretary of State Blinken. Now I want to turn all eyes towards a woman who has, over a long and stellar career, to say the least, acted as a one-woman State Department of her own for Indian cuisine. That's on top of her work as an actress and an author. At almost 90 years of age, she is still the living embodiment of all the ways food bridges distance, geographically, politically, and culturally. Personal fun fact, one of her first jobs in New York when she first moved here was to be a guide at the UN giving tours. Another woman in that class of guides, my mother. It's true, for so many reasons, we all love her so much, and that is why Matter Joffrey is the recipient of the 2023 Lifetime Achievement Award. I think her work speaks for itself. Let's take a look at this incredible life. My name is Mother Joffrey. It's hard to describe who I am because I can't always put it into a single sentence. I was born in 1933. I used to remember climbing the mango trees and my elder cousins cutting off the mangoes and peeling them and cutting them and then we would dip it in this salt, pepper, cumin, cayenne kind of mixture and eat it. It was just kind of heaven. I was growing up in a time when India was fighting for independence, and that was very hard on people like me. So I started my life as a battler, as a revolutionary. At the same time, I was struggling to find myself, but I knew, I knew there was a place where I would find myself, but it wasn't going to be India. I started the Royal Academy. I started studying there. And while I was there, I began to realize that English food in the 50s was horrible. So I started writing letters to my mother. And I said, please, please send me recipes. I want to learn how to cook. And those are the recipes that are on the end pages of my first cookbook. My first introduction to Mother's work was um, an invitation to Indian cooking, her cookbook. That cookbook was very much one of the first like, mainstream cookbooks in America by an Indian author that really sought to introduce non-Indian audiences to Indian food. She just has this like enviable energy radiating off of her in every movie, in every show in reading her books. Welcome to Gujarat. Here I shall be feasting on some sensational vegetarian food. I shall be climbing up to temples that float in the sky. 
When I saw her make those puris, I felt like I could make them. And I came right home with this book. <laughs> and I looked at the recipe and I said, I'm gonna make them. And when they turned out, I just felt so empowered. I made that. Welcome. It's really just a distinct honor to have Mother Jaffrey here. I knew nothing and started from scratch. I write in the same way as if you know nothing and you're going to learn and get it absolutely right. I'm going to tell you all these details so you don't get it wrong. It's hard to know why people follow you, but I've been writing recipes since 1973 which is a long time ago. And I'm still writing because I feel very fervently about everything. The way that she writes and talks about food is really impossible to resist. <laughs> this is her love. This is what she has a passion for. Here she is, like, a titan of the Indian American community, and she could very easily choose to to gatekeep, to not want to share herself, her wisdom, with the next generation. But she has done the exact opposite of gatekeep. She has personally shaped the direction of my career. Like, I truly don't think I would be doing what I and doing if it weren't for her. I want to pass it on. Some people tell you, oh, I don't tell them everything. <laughs> Otherwise, they'll be as good as I am. I never have that thought because I want them to be as good. I want them to be better. I want to make them understand what makes a recipe successful, and I want them to do the same. Madder could not be with us tonight because no doubt she's working on another book while she's writing another children's book, while she is filming an episode of Masterclass, all at the same time as learning her lines for a new movie between meetings with heads of state and all the other stuff that most people do when they're almost 90. I mean, seriously, if this woman, like if I could harness the energy that she has in one of her fingers, I'd be doing okay. So we salute her and thank her for her contributions that are immeasurable. <laughs> Speaking of which, this is the home stretch for me, dear reader, audience. One of my teammates should be arriving any second. Yep, I see him. There he is. Eric Adjapong, everyone, genius cook, charming personality. Apparently, but he's fit. Looking good. What's up? What's up? All right, I've got the baton. Right on time. You ready? I think so. Yeah. Hello, hello. <laughs> Way to make an entrance. Thank you so much. <laughs> Uh, I think I might be ready to do another lap, actually. Yeah, you should. That looked pretty good. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm actually ready for this. Okay, here's the thing. Okay. They haven't eaten yet. <laughs> okay. They're hungry. They look a little hungry, you're right. So That's a lot of y'all too, oh my goodness. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Keep um, it light, keep it fun. I'll put this on ice. I'll see you in a bit. Thanks everyone. <laughs> Enjoy it, girl. It's great to see you, audience. You guys are looking really sharp as well. Listen, when you stay ready, you never have to get ready. That's exactly why I've been in this tuxedo since Friday. I'm like waiting for this moment right here. <laughs> so let's keep the pace going and move on to the next awards. I'm going to begin by kicking off the regional Best Chef Awards presented by Capital One. These awards highlight the culinary excellence in 12 regions across the country and celebrate an abundance of delectable destinations to visit in each one. If you're up for our first award, you stand out in an incredibly talented and crowded field. Candidates for Best Chef Midwest represent a wide array of cuisines, cultures, from classic American traditions with European and African roots to the robust indigenous and immigrant communities flourishing in each region. And the nominees are... Sana Aboresk, Sana's Gourmet Mediterranean. 
Gregory Leon, Amelinda, Francesco Mangano, Osteria Papave, Itaru Nagano, and Andrew Crager, Fairchild, David Utterback, Yoshitomo. And the winner is Itaru Nagawu and Andrew Craig. Love it. This is so major. This just goes to show that it really matters who you work with in your life. Between these two people, they have both worked under Tom Colicchio, Jose Andres, Thomas Keller, and more. Which is pretty loud. Or excuse yeah. me, not both of them, but between both of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to have a situation where they can come together and really like mm -hmm. create together, like you know, I think <laughs> there's this idea of chefs are sort of a little bit even with Michael, right? They sure. have to like run their own place, it's their vision. But to have two partners that really are have a co equal vision is true. it's like when you get into that situation as a creative person, like there's nothing more fulfilling. Also for something like this to be in Madison, like wow. You know? This is, what, this is what's amazing about these awards. We keep on seeing people who are representing parts of the country that Incredible. we would have never thought of as as destinations for food. Incredible. Incredible. Uh, hi. <laughs> I'd like to thank my beautiful wife for understanding the hard work and the dedication it takes. Um, the, our business partners, our small team, um, our farmers, and the city of Madison. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, I also like to thank my partner Marley for making it all happen, our daughter Evangeline, uh, my best friend who I get to cook with every day, Ataru, all the farmers of Madison, our regulars, and the uh, James Beard Foundation. Thank you so much. And moving on to the award for Best Chef Mountain, the nominees are... Salvador Alamia, Amano. Michael Diaz de Leon, Rupo. Suchada Johnson, Titan Ta. Chris Camori, Kim. Ali Sabah, Maza. And the winner is... Chris Kamori, Ken. This is so major. You guys, this would have been Chris Kamari's fifth nomination. So to finally receive a win, can you imagine how he must be all feeling? All the feelings, all oh. the feels. And also just like such a moment for Boise, which really such a food scene, really. Wow, this is incredible. I can't imagine what he must be feeling like. After the, after the fourth time, are you like, <laughs> am I gonna put on the suit? Am I not gonna put on the suit? Am I gonna show up to this award one more time? Uh, I'm mean, really glad he did. Well deserved. I mean, so much effort. I mean, just goes to show, you know, you gotta keep pushing. I mean, I was 2016, 2017, 2018. Uh, incredible. 2022. <laughs> and so, here so he is in 2023. Incredible. I'm so thrilled for him. Um, yeah. uh, first, I, I do, we wanna thank the foundation um, not only for this incredible honor, but the conscious decision to kind of elevate and raise up some underrepresented communities in our industry. Um, yeah, and for us, a little bit of that is also geographically. Um, I mean, who in this room thought someone from Idaho would be up here? I didn't, that's for sure. So thank you for the opportunity uh, for letting us connect with so many people. Um, you know, and I, I realize that it's, it's my name, but I think everyone in here understands how many people it takes um, to even get to Chicago for this. So this is for all those people that have gotten me that far. Um, so this is for my wife, Allie, who has supported me since our early days slinging fondue. Um, I just thank you for the patience and all the support of being married to me, but also married to a restaurant. Um, this is for my mother and sister and aunts and grandmother, who are strong, intelligent women who have guided me through life. Thank 
Uh, this is this is for my business partner, Ramy. Um, we uh, we don't agree on everything, but we always have each other's backs. And he's like the brother that I never had. So the older, much older brother. Uh, and then this is for our crew, who we brought all of them out here to come enjoy the weekend. <laughs> um, we are incredibly lucky to have such a group of people that pour their heart and soul into a place that others would just call a job. You know, um, They're genuine and thoughtful and beautifully unique, so this is for you. And then uh, lastly, this is, this is for the city of Boise and the whole Treasure Valley of Idaho. Um, you know, this is for the farms and ranchers and purveyors. It's for our creative community who keeps us inspired. Um, it's for our friends and loyal guests. Uh, from every molecule of my body, I thank you and I appreciate you. And uh, we're all kin. So when we get home, we'll celebrate together. Thank you. Congratulations, chefs. It is an all-star cast in here. You guys should give yourselves a round of applause. I know we all work in the business, but I'm having a hard time not acting like a super fan. I feel like I'm in Comic-Con right now, to be honest. <laughs> the Regional Best Chef Award shows just how much is happening. How many different, highly specific trends are happening in American food? Everywhere, all at once, all the time. Which for a person like me who lives, breathes, and travels food year round is just extremely exciting. Guys, if I could be completely honest with you right now, I'm actually feeling really good on the stage. So much so that like, I feel like I'm in a good rhythm, I look all right. I have no idea how my co-host Esther and Andrew are gonna get me off here, to be honest. Um, but with that said, <laughs> let's move on to our next presenter. A culinary adventure in her own right. A chef, TV host, and a woman on a mission to share the glories of Puerto Rican cooking with the world. Please welcome Monte Carlo. Hay latinos aquí o no? Okay, yes. So this next category, uh, Best Chef South, has brought more drama <laughs> than a Mariah Carey concert, but we're here for it. We're here for it. I'm just stoked that there are two incredibly talented Latinas on this list. Yes, give it up for the women. It'll be a long night if you don't. Go ahead. Yes. <laughs> Just saying. Thank you. Including, P.S., the very first Puerto Rican woman to make it to the James Beard Awards final. Okay. Yes. Imi Boricuas. You know, we've been running these kitchens for many years. We're finally filling out this room. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Historic indeed. Now, um, as you know, rising tides lift all boats. But not everyone gets a seat on the boat. So, on a personal note, I want to thank you, James Beard Foundation, for recognizing Puerto Rican cuisine. No matter what happens tonight, I could not be prouder. Yes! Thank you! All right! And the nominees for Best Chef South are... Anna Castro, Lengua Madre, yes. Timothy Hansas, Johnny's Restaurant, Henry Moso, Kabuki Sushi, Alex Perry and Kumi Amori, Vestich, Natalia Vallejo, Cocina Al Fondo. <laughs> okay. And the winner is Natalia Vallejo. Wow, wow. Um, 
wow, okay. wow, 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 so wow. obviously this is a big, big moment. Natalia Vallejo, she's the first time ever being nominated wow. for for this incredible award, and she's winning it while Monty is on stage, and she was just talking about how important it is to have diversity. Natalia is really a shining light in terms of celebrating traditional Puerto Rican flavors and terroir. She works closely with local farmers and purveyors. She is involved in every different organization that she can be supporting local producers in, visit, in Puerto Rico. Um, she, she is really something special and she has traveled all around the world and she so much. Um, um, muchísimas gracias. Primero que nada, quiero expresar mi sincero agradecimiento a la Fundación. Muchas gracias, James Beer, por visibilizar lo que hacemos y gracias a quienes desde muchos ámbitos hicieron posible que esto sucediera. Muchas felicidades a todos los finalistas en este año también. Para mí es un verdadero honor estar aquí representando a Puerto Rico, a la identidad. A la identidad culinaria de mi país y a las mujeres puertorriqueñas. Recibo, recibo este premio con humildad y agradecimiento, entendiéndolo como un reconocimiento que reivindica el trabajo de las mujeres en las cocinas. Esto lo digo... Porque más allá de la denominación de chef, me considero parte de una larga tradición de cocineras, de mujeres frente al fuego, de madres, tías, abuelas, preparando platos desde la intuición, la tradición, la memoria y los afectos. También mi eterno agradecimiento a mis padres aquí presentes por darme esta primera chispa de apoyo y luz para lanzarme a esta carrera culinaria. Gracias a mi familia, amistades, por estar conmigo desde el principio, les amo. Igual, de forma más que especial, quiero expresar mi agradecimiento a Carla, mi amada compañera y socia aquí presente también. Gracias por caminar juntas de la mano en este camino hermoso, en esta realidad, muchas veces difícil de llevar adelante un restaurante, empresa, en una colonia como la que vivimos. Igualmente, y no menos importante, Agradecer también a las personas y equipo de trabajo que me han acompañado día a día, que han defendido, cuidado y creído en esta propuesta. A mi equipo de cocina al fondo, mi agradecimiento y felicitaciones. Soy afortunada de tenerles. Mi agradecimiento a agricultores, pescadores, horticultores y a toda esa cadena de productores puertorriqueños que han posibilitado echar adelante a diario un proyecto de este tipo. Vengo de Puerto Rico. Un país archipiélago ubicado en el Caribe llamado originalmente Boriquén. En una mano llevo nuestros machetes como símbolo de fuerza y resistencia y en la otra un puñado de lerenes y ñames de mina. Si bien es cierto que en Puerto Rico, dada su situación colonial y todas las borraduras que ha traído consigo, aún queda trabajo por hacer para que entendamos, revaloricemos y presumamos nuestra tradición e identidad, identidad culinaria propia. Es motivo de orgullo que nuestra cocina, nuestra alimentación tradicional no han sucumbido frente a las inclemencias políticas, historias, históricas, económicas y naturales que nos han tocado vivir. Por lo mismo, este premio es un respaldo, lo recibimos como un impulso directo a esa celebración de la dignidad y particularidad de nuestra gastronomía. Por lo demás, solo queda decir otra vez gracias, felicidades Puerto Rico y que no se apaguen los fogones del alma y el corazón. Gracias. Um, I obviously like her a lot. <laughs> um, but seriously, this is the uh, very first Puerto Rican person to ever win a James Beard Award, so. <laughs> Wow. 
Do I have mascara down in my cheeks? Lie to me. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> this, uh, this next category is all about the Northeast region. And as you know, the Northeast region runs from the beaches of Long Island all the way to the tippy top northern end of Maine. But our nominees take us from Greece to the, yes, to, to the Yunnan province. They expose us to the flavors of North Africa. They tell us the stories of the Wampanoag. And they even highlight the street food of Puerto Rico. Yes, you can clap for Puerto Rico, it's okay. I'm okay with it. Here are the nominees for Best Chef Northeast. Valentine Howell, Prasi. Christian Hunter, Community Table. Sherry Pocknett, Sly Fox Den 2. Yisha Shao, Yunnan Kitchen. Renee Tupons, The Port of Call. As part of their menu, they incorporate mostly indigenous ingredients and preparations that are native to mostly North America. There's also tons of programming at their restaurant that has you know, pretty extensive access to knowledge regarding the true history of the food here in North America. So this is pretty incredible. I am not sure that Sherry Potter would be here. Is she here? That's amazing. Oh my gosh, so here's, some, here's the thing. Right now, uh, she's dealing with an illness. So it's pretty incredible that, oh my God, it's so moving. Wow, I'm getting emotional just looking at this. I mean, you guys, this is unbelievable that she's here. Right now, she is dealing with an illness. So for her to be here and represent her community. And there's Sean Sherman to greet her in the aisle. He, of course, last year oh, was the first tears. indigenous chef to win, or oh the first chef to win uh, a James Reed Award for an indigenous restaurant. How Your emotional is this? Super emotional. I'm getting very emotional. Wow. I can't this is such a big deal. I can't believe this. This would be the first female indigenous woman to win James Beard Award. <laughs> I represent the whole Northeast tribes, our cooking ways. Ooh, this was a surprise. Um, thank you. My mother told me yesterday, when I talked to her on the phone, she said, your grandmother's with you. It's her birthday today. My grandmother's birthday, and I grew up in the 60s. So I went to my grandmother's and did all kinds of stuff. Um, I had to learn a lot of stuff. Um, I have cancer. I'm sure I'm not the only one in the room that does, but I'm almost through it. I'm almost through it. And for this honor, it's just unbelievable. It's something that I never even dreamed of. Thank you. Congratulations to our newest James Beard Award winners. The Foundation's Leadership Award took place this earlier this weekend with the food writer, historian, cookbook author, and television producer, Dr. Jessica B. Harris, leading the festivities. Since the... <laughs> it's all on camera, too. Jeez Louise. Good. 
Oh man, thank you, appreciate it. <laughs> Since the early 1970s, Dr. Harris has traced the critical role of African cooks and cooking in the formation of American culture and cuisine. It was her work that's taken her back to West Africa, where my family is from, so she holds a special place in, her, in my heart. Since she, is this, uh, she herself is the recipient of multiple James Beard Awards, including the 2020 Lifetime Achievement Award. Now, you guys may remember we weren't in person that year, so please, if you are able to stand, please do me the honor in joining me in welcoming a legend to the stage, Dr. Jessica B. Harris. <laughs> Thank you, Eric, and thank you. Thank you all for that extraordinary welcome. The Leadership Awards recognize those who are creating a healthier, safer, and more equitable and sustainable food system. This year's honorees have broken new ground in a variety of ways. For the first time ever, one of the honorees is a labor union. There you go. There is also a new focus on the most essential, most basic unit of any meal, and therefore of our survival. And I'm talking about seeds. Seed cultivation, seed saving, and seed keeping are essential to our future. And the 2023 honorees reflect that. Finally, the Leadership Awards this year recognize the inherent link between access to land for growing and equitable, sustainable access to food for all. Three of the awards went to organizations or individuals who fearlessly guard and seek to expand the network of small, family, and black and brown owned farms in our country. I salute and thank them for their service to the earth and to all of us on it. And here's a video to show you more. Today we celebrate our 12th class of leadership honorees. These are visionaries driving the evolution of our culinary community and our food system as a whole. It's what we call good food for good. And the honorees today really are the personification of that sentiment. Do leaders choose their roles? I don't think so. I believe purpose finds them. Even in a small garden, you can save seeds because it's one way that you can do an everyday bit of resistance against big ag. Liberate the land. Empower the producers of the land. Justice for food chain workers. I have enormous hope that working people have it in themselves to create a better world than the shell of the old. That day is sooner rather than later. Each one of you has an opportunity to make yourself into a vessel into which wise voices of your ancestors can echo. This award really isn't simply about me. Now here's y'all's tagline. It's about we. Y'all help me now, here's the chorus. It ain't just about me, it's about we. When we see a need and a way that we can help, and have the means, then we meet that need. So together, we thank you. Please welcome this year's leadership honorees, Jim Embry, <laughs> Valerie Horn, <laughs> Sammy Horn,
From the James Beard Foundation, please welcome Vice President of Awards, Don Padmore. Good afternoon, everyone, or good evening, I think. I breathe a huge sigh of relief when we get to this day. It's great to be here. The process that leads up to these awards is a yearly opportunity for reflection and renewal as we continue to align this celebration with the Foundation's mission to build a more inclusive, accessible, and sustainable culinary industry for everyone. Committee members take a lead role in defining and refining that process, and judges approach their task with seriousness and great care. It is my privilege to acknowledge and thank them all, with a special shout out to the Restaurant and Chef Awards committee members in the house today. That's right. Thank you. I also want to acknowledge my wonderful awards team. They're all backstage working. Katrina. <laughs> Sam or Samantha. Max. And Caroline. And now it gives me great pleasure to turn the mic over once again to the most fabulous Tanya Holland. It's good to be back. Thanks, John. I echo your thanks to the committee members and judges who volunteer their time in support of our work. Before I read the next nominees and winners, I think it's important to take a moment now to acknowledge that all of our events this weekend take place on the traditional homelands of indigenous people whose descendants still live on this land. Thank you. Many foods we associate with particular regions of this country were first cultivated by native people and figure prominently in the cooking of their culinary descendants. Cooks and chefs still working in those areas. As this next group of nominees shows, for Best Chef Southwest, the nominees are... Oscar Amador, Anima by EDO. Kaoru Azeuchi, Kaiseki Yuzu. Andrew Black, Gray Sweater. Jeff Chanchaloon, Madulao Kitchen. Justin Paiochi, Paiochi Food Group. All right, and the winner is Andrew Black. Great weather, Oklahoma. Incredible. Making Oklahoma City proud. Yeah. You know, like Chris Kamora noted, uh, in an earlier award. There are so many parts of the country that have not won mm -hmm. Beard Awards. Yes. They're just smaller cities and towns and in the past, it's just hard to get the kind of national attention that right. leads to the sort of recognition that uh, voters will see. And, you know, already tonight we've seen so many places. Boise got, Idaho, the state of Idaho got its first award. Madison. And this, yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is the state of Oklahoma's first award. Yes. It's incredible this year, the, the diversity across the country. Is, I mean, Puerto Rico, first beard award for Puerto Rico is pretty amazing. Come on, you gotta say it. A great sweater. <laughs> I opened this restaurant called the Gray Sweater Restaurant in Oklahoma City. And the very first night I opened this restaurant, I had four guests. <laughs> I'm gonna try to hold it together. But, one of the guests ran out. I was standing at the bar, and he ran out, and he said, Chef Black, you can go to hell, because no one is coming for this food. No one is paying for it. And I went home that night feeling so defeated. All my staff was watching. All the three guests that was left saw it. So I tell myself I wasn't going in the next day. Three o'clock came. I went to turn off the fridge, but all the cooks in front of the house was there. And that's when I knew 
when made the right decision to open this tasting menu restaurant. And then, and then something happened, it's called COVID. And I looked outside and there was envelopes packing up and I tell myself it's nothing but bills, so I didn't pick them up. And one day I went out and picked it up and the community, Oklahoma, was dropping off checks to us so we could survive. So this is bigger than I am. This is, I'm just used for the vessel. I'm just the one that is blessed with faith and belief. My grandmother, Elizabeth Bandu, may God bless her soul up there, has started this journey with me. But throughout it all, I could not have done it without Rudy Kaur, my business partner. I, we used to have a restaurant called the Meatball House on a college corner. I thought I was gonna print money. It didn't happen. He has never looked at me one day like I was a screw up. He has always supported me. It got so bad that payday, I used to go to the Starbucks to hide because we had no money to pay the staff. And I'd wait until Friday when we know we'd had a little session to gather the money to pay the staff. And Dylan, my executive sous chef, my writer, and my brother, my friend, everything. I got him. He came to me walking that day from a pizza joint. He said, I need a job. I said, can you cook? He said, no, but I'm here. I never judge him. I spent years in a little corner listening to heavy metal music with him. Never cut a corner. One day I said, can you taste this sauce? And he started telling me everything that's needed. And I said, young man, you have something that people go to school for. You're going to be great. He has went through without getting paid. And here he stands by me still. This is no longer for me. It's for people that have helped along the way, the great people. This is for Oklahoma City. Jeff is in the house somewhere that tells his story to his family also with his restaurant. So this is not just for me. It's for me, it's for Jeff. It's for every single one in Oklahoma. Everyone is streaming it right now. And they're so proud of what we have achieved. And thanks to the Jane Baird Foundation and everyone, this is something that we now have the responsibility to work harder and give back to charity. I've called in some of you in this room. All I'm asking for is to pick up the phone. Help us support kids in need. Freedom City in Oklahoma City. Help us to get better at what we do. I just want to thank a few people here. I could not have done it without a wonderful team. I've made a lot of mistakes, but these are people that are stand by me. Chance, my best friend is sitting there. He's been known him for 17 years. We opened a restaurant together, Michelle. Um, Steve Lackmire, the Kaya Carpenter, the Chelsea, the Kimberly, the John Williams, the, if I leave anyone, please forgive me, the Lisa, the Tammy, the, just everyone, Ham, so thanks to everyone. Anything, sir? <laughs> Congratulations to Chef and their team. You know, James, I'm just going to quickly say, James Beard Awards change lives. I mean, you can see, right? It's incredible. Lizzo says thick thighs change lives, and I think that's, <laughs> I think that's true, too. I mean, I may, might be biased, but anyways. Um, I want to give a quick shout out to the culinary students from Kendall College, helping us hand out the medallions tonight. Jimena? Jimena Cantu and Andy Pearson. Are you coming out? Come out, come out. I, th I think they're shy. Good job. <laughs> okay, for Best Chef Southeast, the nominees are... Sam Four, Tuk Tuk Sri Lankan Bites. Josh Habiger, Bastion. <laughs> Sam Hart, Counter. Terry Koval, The Deer and the Dove. Paul Smith, 1010 Bridge. And the winner is, try to open this so they can save it. 
You ready? Terry Cavell, the deer and the duck. So incredible. This is Terry's very first James Beard Award. And some fun facts about him, which I think are so cool. He actually dropped out of school at 15 to go to California to be a pro skateboarder. Mm, he was going to try really? it out. Yes. He's going to try it out to be a pro skateboarder. Ended up learning so much about food, right? And then decides, okay, I'll go back to Georgia and like do my thing there. Love a skater kid. Isn't that so cool? I wonder if he still skates. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say any menu that features highly uh, beef heart tartare, some bone marrow <laughs> is right up my alley. This so is like cool. an awful heaven for me. Skateboarder and, and rock and roll chef. It just goes to show that your path is not to be linear. He's uh. got guts. <laughs> cool, oh, right? no, you didn't. Uh, He's got guts. Okay. Uh. That was funny. Great. Uh, incredible. Um, First, I'd like to thank the James Beard Foundation for this amazing honor to stand in front of all of you all. And um, second, love to thank, thank my wife, Jen, who's been by my side this whole entire time and fighting for our restaurant um, since the day we opened. My kids who stood by us while we were at work all day long, all night long. Um, my incredible staff that worked so hard throughout the pandemic. My new staff that's with us, that's fought, fighting through everything as well. Um, all our patrons that came and supported us throughout this whole time. Of course, all our farmers and ranchers who make us all look so good at what we do. And to all our patrons and friends and family, this is incredible and what an honor. Thank you so much. Can I just say the amount of text messages I got for Booker Gate 2023 in the back was absolutely hilarious. Thank you, my man. Appreciate it. Thank you. You got me. Um, all right. We covered a lot of territory, <laughs> but I feel like I just got here. Um, and I say that's probably a good sign. We're zipping along. How's everybody feeling? Nice, nice, nice. Because in any second right now, I should be getting the boots. Any second. Any second. Hey, here, here, what's going here. on? How are you? I'm here. <laughs> How and, are you? Good uh, to see you. What's going on? You know, I have to make my grand entrance. Okay. You know, I have Michelle with me. I have to bring light with me. What are we doing? Because you know now? why? We're going to take a selfie. Okay. Okay. Am I in this? Of course. Let's do this. All right, Eric, come on. You guys all sign releases? We're all good to take a selfie? <laughs> all right, we're doing this. Oh my God, so cute. You we got to get everyone. Boom. Uh, perfect. <laughs> so cute. I'm totally posting that. Oh my gosh. Everyone, she needs no introduction, but this is the amazing Esther Choi. And she's gonna be taking <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And as you can see, she'll be taking it here from now. Audience, you've been amazing. Shout out to you, shout out to the Bronx. I'm out, thank y'all. Okay, one more round of applause for the amazing Eric Adjapong, everybody. See you on the other side. <laughs> All right, how's everyone's night so far? Are we having a good time? I totally am having a good time, especially now that I'm on stage. Not really. <laughs> well, uh, we're going to pick it up with more regional awards now, starting with a couple of regions right next to my own home region, which is New Jersey. That's right. Yeah, I grew up in a tiny little town in South Jersey with like very few Koreans. Yeah, woo, South Jersey. No one's from South Jersey <laughs> besides me. <laughs> Well, thankfully, I had a grandma who planted the taste and techniques of Korean food right in my bones, mostly by improvising with local ingredients. Well, it turns out there are a lot of people in New Jersey and everywhere else, apparently, who really love what she taught me. So, 할머니, 감사합니다. <laughs> <clears throat> I know all the nominees tonight draw on their own roots in different ways. And it's that kind of living knowledge, in my opinion, that gives any food its regional flair and makes it so special and so worthy of these awards. So, here we go. For Best Chef Mid-Atlantic, the nominees are... Jesse Ito, Royal Sushi. Dionisio Jimenez, Cantina La Martina. Kate Lasky and Tomas Skoronski. 
Azteca. Michael Rafidi, Audi. Chuta Kip, Nok, Suntareno, Halaya. And the winner is Chuta Tip, Nok, Suntaron, Halaya. So awesome. So uh, awesome. I saw her on the carpet and she just looked so good on the carpet. She is the queen. Okay, full disclosure. I am really tight with Doc. We had dinner last night. I am working on her cookbook, so I am a little biased. Go ahead, go but ahead. She Love it, like, bring it. is the queen, not just of serving looks, just in general. For many years, she was a flight attendant. What? She had no culinary aspirations, and she met a Philadelphian, came to the U.S., and then was like, y'all need to get serious about Thai food over here. So she went to culinary school and opened Kalaya, which is named after her mother, not just because she, you know, wasn't like satisfied with the Thai food in Philly, but because she felt like the food, even in our home region oh, yeah. of Tong, was getting watered down in Thailand. So she cooked the food that tastes like what she grew up with. And it's her mission to not just share it with Americans, but to preserve the flavors of her youth in her restaurant. And it is just the most spectacular flavor. Okay, booking a flight to Philly ASAP. I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, I'll just take the train there. Are you kidding? I'm in New York. I mean, I'm in Chicago right now. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I'm so thrilled for her. What a moment. Wow. Okay, um, yesterday my husband asked me to write, you know, practice acceptance speech or whatever. Sometimes I don't speak English and most of the time I don't. <laughs> I was, so when I started like a few words, I started crying because this is something I want so bad. I really want it so much because I opened the restaurant, named it after my mom. Here. The woman who worked really hard and devoted every minute of her life to make my life and my brother's life better. My dear husband, Sif, I love you. Thank you for your unconditional love, your love that, you know, the support that you have for me. My work husband, <laughs> Greg Root, Al Lucas, Nick Kennedy, Roland Cassis, Everybody who believe in my vision, JBF Foundation for changing this industry for more equitable, more equitable, see, I'm telling you I don't speak English, <laughs> and for better, for people of Philadelphia who love my food. <laughs> and something for every one of you here. Come to Philly. Stay for Tom Yam Kalaya. Greg asked me to say it. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. So much congratulations, Jeff. Thank yes. You. So much congratulations. So these days, I live in Manhattan, but I spend a lot of time in the Hudson Valley and greater New York area. I know I said I'm from Jersey, but these days I like to call myself a New Yorker. So it gives me great pleasure and pride to announce the nominees for Best Chef New York State. And they are... Nassim Alikani, Sofre, Mary Atia, The Musket Room, Amanda Cohen, Dirt Candy, Shayna Lowe Malayan, Cafe Mutton, Chung Yun Park, Atomics. And the winner is Chung Yun Park, Atomics. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh good. yeah. This is good. I, I'm, New York is in this incredible, like, golden age for creative Korean food right now. There are so many amazing new places that have opened in recent years. Broken out of the Korean barbecue cliche, and JP and his wife, Elia, are absolutely at the forefront of it. You know, JP researches ancient Korean dishes and uses that for inspiration. And he originally came to the U.S. to be the CDC at the two Michelin star Jungsik. And his old boss, Jungsik himself, you know, now he broke off with his wife to open his own restaurants. And his old boss, Jungsik himself, 
says that the whole Korean chef community looks to JP to lead the way. Simon Kim just gave him a high five, big beaming smile. <laughs> this is really, they are they are royalty in New York, and I mean, chic AF, so but chic. also, so chic. Um, I just ate it at him a couple weeks ago, and it's just spectacular. Okay, I've eaten there so many times. I also had the pleasure of cooking with him for the Met Gala in 2021. Really? Okay. Iconic. Sophia wins. <laughs> we have many stories. <laughs> this is so, so major. I'm so happy for them. As a couple, too, that working together, I just think it's so cool. I love it. Wow. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, this award is means more to me than any award I haven't got. I haven't gotten or perhaps will get. The reason why is usually award is given to the achievement that is material or some goal. But actually, this award is not about one restaurant or one dish that I made before, but more about the recognition of the past that I myself and together with my wife, Elia, and also our team has walked and will walk through. So my career is motivated not simply by the success, major in the money or reputation, but most importantly, by the influence that I have. In the way I'm thinking is positive, morally correct. This award, this recognition, the my past has a meaning and it's going to be positive direction. I came to America as an immigration, as an adult, not speaking much English not knowing much about the culture here. My study is beginning in the New York City, and I and, and I'm only felt comfortable with my language, which is cooking. So I converse in... <laughs> so I converse in this language for the last eight years. And I think I was able to communicate my heart and my intention with the world through the food. This award is a reward from the all of you to me. Through this language, I believe that can break the wall and bring people together. And I strongly believe that we can change the world with the food and create happiness in our own and each other's life. Thank you to everyone here who believe in this power and for continuing to support each other to make our world a better place. I'm very grateful to be the part of the community with you all of you guys and truly honored for this James Beard Award. Thank you so much. And one more thing, so my father and mother is watching this award through the YouTube. So thank you so much. 어머니, 아버지, 감사합니다. Thank you. But, you know, I'm Korean, so that was so incredibly, such a proud moment. Oh, my gosh. Thanks. Congratulations. Well, oh, my gosh. I am so inspired. Is everyone inspired tonight? Yes? Well, as you know, the Restaurant and Chef Awards are part of a jam-packed weekend of celebrations. On Saturday, the winners of this year's Media Awards were announced, and the host was the creator, producer, and star of Patty's Mexican Table and La Frontera on PBS. So please help me welcome to the stage, Patty Henich. Buenas noches, everybody. Hola. And thank you so much, Esther. What a thrill to be here with you tonight. 
And please ignore my footwear. I have a little boot because I have a little fractured foot. Um, on our series, Paris Mexican Table in La Frontera, we go everywhere. We go up mountains, up trees, descending caves, and this happened while I was trailing a story deep in the jungles of the Yucatan. And I know I was supposed to say a few words of caution and say that I needed to give a message to myself and share with you to take a little bit more time and do things more slowly, but who are we kidding? We're not gonna stop, we're gonna keep on going. There's too much to see, too much to share, and every journey has its trade-off. So I'll shake off this boot in a couple of weeks. It has been a great joy in my life to be able to broadcast unheard stories from both my home country and my adopted country, the US, the US including some fascinating ones from our next region, all 1,000 miles of it. And here are the nominees for Best Chef California. Gilberto Cetina Jr. Holbox. Kyle and Katina Connaughton. Single thread. Brandon Hayato Go. Hayato. Justin Peter Rumsey. Anna Jack Tai. Carlos Salgado. Taco Maria. You guys want to hear an irresistible crunch? <laughs> Saturday I was saying it's better than tacos, but I think it's better than cookies. And the winner is Justin Pichiramsi. Wow, this, this is really one of the coolest stories in food right now. A kid grows up in his family's Thai restaurant, like an OG Thai restaurant, like literally one of the first Thai restaurants in America goes to college classic immigrant story of like the, the you know the parents are like you do not want to do this go get a college degree so he does uh -huh. and he builds a career in design at disney has like a 10-year career there then his father gets sick and he comes back to the family restaurant just before covid hit all of a sudden here he is with a beard award look at wow. that what a story look at that young star right here Wow, thank you so much to the Beer Foundation. This is, um, this is something. Uh, I, I didn't go to cooking school. I, I watched my dad cook when I was a kid. You know, the restaurant's 43 years old. And my dad had cooked there standing in his station for 38 years. And it's a hard station. So when he got ill and I had to take over that station, I was like, Dad, what the hell? <laughs> this was, it was lead walk, right? Soups, also on this hand. Salads, over here, lap, right? Doing lap, right? While doing noodles. And he was expoing. <laughs> it's the same time. And I was like, I gotta change this. I'm not, I'm not you, Dad, you know, I'm not. I told, <laughs> I told my team early, I was like, so I'm, I'm not like Dad, so I'm gonna change things up a little, okay? <laughs> I remember poking my head out uh, of the office. You know, I watched TV in the office and he'd be like yelling at the cooks. My mom would be like running around and be like, It'd be a very busy, you know, convivial atmosphere. And that's the sound I'm just so magnetized to. Um, and when I, t when I speak with my fellow nominees, Gilberto, Chef Carlos, Chef Brandon, um, you guys all work with your parents and watch them do some incredible work. And now you guys are carrying on an incredible legacy. That's. Uh, that's hard, you know? Um, who here, by just show of hands, are, have taken over their family or their parents' restaurant? Who here? Give it up for these guys. Give it up for these guys. <laughs> I don't envy those people. <laughs> 
but there's a lot of intergenerational pain there. And we're trying to heal it one dish at a time here, guys. <laughs> my parents are my teachers. My team has become my teachers. Wonderful GM, Angela, my Sue's, Chef Juan, Chef Ian, all the cooks, dishwashers, the amazing front of house wine team. My prom date, Kelsey, who, beautiful. Um, <laughs> My girlfriend, she purveys all my uh, seafood, and she's also the DJ at Anna Jack. So if you guys come by and you like the tunes, it's it's because of her. Um, but but I'd love to to thank my parents because they are um, my greatest allies. They argue with me a lot. I have the hardest conversations with them about where the direction of the restaurant is going, where the direction of cooks are going to be going, what's the math involved and all this stuff. Um, but they gave me the tools to do everything else and for that I'm eternally grateful for them. So thank you to them, mom and dad, and thank you to you guys for this incredible award. Continuing up the coast, we get Best Chef Northwest and Pacific. And here are the nominees. Joshua Dorchak, Maas. Vince Wynn, Berlu. Thomas Pisha Duffley, Gado Gado. Bo Schooler, in Boca Alupo. Aaron Verzosa, Archipelago. of Berlou. It offers this like expectation bending, genre defying, never say fine dining approach to Vietnamese food. It is also just really, really fun. Vince has said he definitely is more rebellious and wants to break some rules because he's so accustomed to as a Vietnamese son in a Vietnamese family to having to pay attention to tradition sure, yeah. and so he really when the pandemic hit he did everything he opened a bakery during the day he opened a night market at night just to make sure the restaurant could stay afloat wow. and Portland loves this restaurant and apparently the Beard Awards love <laughs> this restaurant oh my gosh thank you so much um First off, thank you for, uh, or thank you to the foundation. Um, thank you to uh, the community of chefs, diners, um, media in Portland who have supported me from day one, even though I'm from Orange County. Um, thank you to my staff, old and, old and present, um, even if you work for me for a day. I, uh, you know, I, I learned from that experience, so thank you. Uh, most of all, thank you to my wife, who you know, is my support, inspiration, and, and everything for me. So thank you guys very much. More <laughs> awards. The 2023 America's Classic Awards honor treasured local establishments of all kinds. These are places where relationships, traditions, locally rooted flavors, and hospitality are everything. They're the antidote to fast fashion and even faster food trends. So leave your phone at home, go grab a map, and let's explore America.
The Pekin Cafe and Lounge, also known as the Pekin Noodle Parlor, started in 1911. Joe's Bakery first opened in 1962. We started in 1990. I always had a vision of having some kind of a, a store. En la Casita Blanca abre en 1980, eh, fundada por nuestro padre Jesús Pérez. Our operation is now the longest ongoing restaurant operation ever in the history of Hawaii. Ever since Wagner's opened, there have been Wagner's family members running and working in this restaurant. Customers will come to the door and, and they will stop and they will actually tell us what a wonderful feeling this place gives them. I think our community really wants to keep all of these family-owned businesses around just because without it, you kind of lose the feeling of the Kona community, and we never want that to change. The easiest way to identify a Wagner's customer is a lighthearted spirit. <laughs> they're some of the, the best people that I've met, and they're great to each other, and they're great to my employees. When you walk in the doors to Joe's Bakery, it's not only the visual, but it's also the sound, it's also the smells. We're very much in embracing who we are, what we are, where we come from, and we are Mexican-American. The unique dining experience of the Pecan starts when you can see this blazing neon sign that says Chop Silly. When you get up the stairs, you walk into the main dining area, and the color of this restaurant is carnival orange. El ambiente de Casita Blanca es un ambiente familiar, bien colorido, de muchos colores. Un ambiente feliz. Es un ambiente donde tú vienes a pasarla bien. Se, se lo puedes percibir por la alegría que tienen nuestros empleados, cómo te atienden. What makes Dzinska an American classic? Or you. Or <laughs> me. Yeah. <laughs> I think Joe's Bakery resonates with so many people as an American's classics because it's fundamentally a family's journey. Bueno, la reacción que tuvimos cuando nos enteramos de que nos habíamos llevado el James Beard American Classic fue un wow. La tenemos. Qué bueno. Qué chévere. Arroz con arroz y habichuela lo logramos. Winning a James Beard Award has so much meaning that it, I'll never be able to encompass all of what it means. The James Beard recognition has been significant, and we're very, very proud and happy to have received it. Getting this James Beard Award means a lot to, to my family and to my mom and dad because they just came here to cook food for people, and that ended up giving them an American status and an American dream come true. America's Classics winners, Regina Estrada of Joe's Bakery and Coffee Shop. Dwight and Sherry Omenago of Manago Hotel. Gloria Barney of Nesin Scott Farm. Leonardo Perez Ruiz and Jesus Perez de Leon of La Casita Blanca. Jerry Tam of Pekin Noodle Parlor. And the final winner, Dan Sacomando of Wagner's Village Inn, is watching from home with his newborn baby. Congratulations to all of you. We all want to eat your food right now. Congratulations. 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 Huge fan. Thank you. We're going to all come out this way.
To present our next award, please welcome James Beard Award winners Sarah Grunberg and Eric Williams. Hello, 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 Chicago! Thank you so much. I'm going to turn it over to Sarah. Thank you, Eric. Now, I'm going to have to take this first one because, you know, I love Chicago, but I grew up in the great state of Texas. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> and we have a reputation for doing everything big. But coming, yeah, that's right. But coming from the international melting pot that is Houston, I like to put the emphasis on everything. Here are the nominees for Best Chef Texas. Reina Duong, Sandwich Hag. Benchuan Jabtong Painter, Street to Kitchen. Emiliano Marentes, Elem. John Russ, Clementine. Ernest Cervantes and David Kirkland, Burnt Bean Company. And the winner is, oh my gosh, Benchuan Pantor, Street to Kitchen, my hometown of Houston, Texas. This is really an absolutely astounding win. This is Benchuan's first win. And she actually learned to cook in her grandmother's town in Thailand. She gets married, and then she's like, oh, I've got to move to Texas. Ah, uh, so she, you know, a very <laughs> typical story. <laughs> so she moves to Texas. She slowly but surely figures out her way and then they decide to open up the restaurant and guess when they opened it 2020 oh man right tough really really tough time to open up a restaurant but they make it work i am so absolutely thrilled with this couple they have been through a lot like it is really 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 incredible to see them up there together and they've stuck with each other oh, the God, whole time it's so cool they are. oh very emotional for them i'm sure so, I mean, I'm, this, is, this is what I love about these awards. <laughs> Amazing. It really is. Sorry, I'm still a bit shaking. Thank you, guys. So, um, this is my first time in Chicago, and I love it, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I moved to uh, Houston, Texas, like, eight years ago with the dream one day. I can stand up right here. And today, the dream has come to, I'm really, really happy. Um, thank you, my husband, who is the one always with me, always stand with me all the time, a top day, a long work day, and who the one always support me, tell me don't give up, who always tell me believe in me no matter what, a good day or bad day. And thank you all my team who are always with me the first day at the beginning. We start to open restaurant in 2020. It's really top year on that time. Thank you my friend and family who always support, who always support me all the time. Even I'm trying to give up so many times and they tell me, don't give up, they always believe in me. And thank you Chef Justin Yu, who is a good teacher, who the one tell me how to be a better chef. Thank you so much. <laughs> And thank you, Zambia Award, who's making my dream come true. Thank you so much, guys. Top Kun Ka. That's incredible. <laughs> All right, before I announce the next award, which you're all gonna want to pay close attention to, I'm honored to say a few words on behalf of Capital One, the presenting sponsor of the award celebration and these regional Best Chef Awards. This, there's so much to celebrate. Capital One is, is a proud partner with the James Beard Foundation 
and a huge supporter of local restaurants in every region in this country. Restaurants build community. There are places where people connect, flavors over shared plates, and common ground. We're at a moment when all across the land, restaurants that are independent are beginning to hum again. There are so many exciting places, new and well known to explore. Now, when it comes to this next award, when it comes to this next award, we are both so proud to be past and present winners in a region overflowing with unlimited talent and colleagues. There's nothing like getting recognition from a place you live in and love. And the nominees for Best Chef Great Lakes are... Omar Anani, Safran Detroit, Diana Davila, Mitokaya Antoheria, Tim Flores, and Jeannie Kwan, Kasama, Andy Holiday, Selden Standard. Sarah Welch, Mara. And the winner is Tim Flores and Jim Kwan. Man, y'all, y'all, Kasama is such a rad restaurant. Like, by day, it's a killer cafe with amazing pastries, simple Filipino home cooking, like pork belly adobo. And that night is this just absolutely fire-tasting menu. It takes those classic Filipino dishes and runs them through the are-you-kidding-me machine. You know, like, that yeah. adobo, like, you know, it's beautifully glazed, beautifully huh. braised and beautifully glazed with a little bit of coconut. And then at night, the adobo is glazed maitake mushrooms, seared scallops with muscle juice, but it still has that same soy and vinegar profile. I just really can't remember can the last time. I mean, can we talk about what they're, what they're wearing? Okay, yes. no, oh, I seriously. I just am going to take a moment for this velvet suit combo. The yes. matching and, green and, velvet and, suit and, is... And the fact that these two people are both exceptionally talented. And, and, and Chicago! Hi! Restaurant here in Chicago accepting their award. Where is their restaurant located in Chicago? Uh, it's like amazing. Look at them. Oh my god. Oh my god, look at them. They're stars. I saw them on the carpet and I was like, are you kidding me? Winners. <laughs> um, it's getting harder and harder to find these matching outfits. <laughs> We want to thank the James Beard Foundation. Um, Kasama is a place. Um, we have 46 incredible team members, and they're just good people that want to take care of people. And everything has fallen into place because of that. And we love you guys. Some of our management team is here. Um, I'd like to thank my husband, Tim. Um, we've pretty much been together every minute of every day for the last eight years. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it, but it's been <laughs> a crazy ride. Uh, we want to thank our partners and our incredible guests and our families um, and our puppy Longanisa. Um, they're all watching. So thank you for your support. We're so proud to represent Chicago. I never thought that I'd be cooking Filipino food until we opened Kasama. And to be recognized for cooking my mom's food is insane. <laughs> um, my parents are in the Philippines right now, uh, on a beach somewhere, drinking out of a coconut while I stand on this stage on the verge of shitting my pants. Um, so, um, Lastly, I just want to thank uh, my business partner and wife, Jeannie Kwan. Uh, 
She is a force, and nobody will work harder to get what she wants than her. And honestly, their fit though, wow, just gorgeous, love it. Well, thank you, Chef Eric and Chef Sarah. I would definitely check out your establishment before I leave town. Um, you guys, so this has been so fun, but I'm so ready for a glass of champagne. <laughs> I need some food, I need my champs. And they told me that Andrew was gonna take my place, but I don't know where he is. Uh, has anyone seen Andrew? Hello, stage managers, Andrew. There he is, of course, eating something. <laughs> Can you share? Were you looking for me? Uh, yes. I brought you a fork because I love you. You're so generous. You Thank crushed you. it. Thank you deserve you. it. Mishama Bailey made that salad, it's delicious. I made... I made a quick trip upstairs to snack, backstage taking a lot of photos, watching just an incredible award show so far. It's been absolutely breathtaking. Ran over to Union Station. You all are gonna eat very well after this party. You should see what they're making. It's absolutely amazing. Sorry, Andrew. Sorry, guys, I'm gonna go eat this now. All for you, Andrew, all for you. Andrew, it's all yours. Esther Choi. Don't you love those little gimmicky handoff bits? <laughs> so awkward. Thank you, Esther. Thank you. But Mishama's salad was really fucking delicious. Um, it, is, it is a real treat to be back here with you all at the James Beard Awards. Uh, and lovelier still uh, to be sharing hosting duties with my incredible colleagues. Uh, and we've got a great award coming up for you now. Um, they all have a piece of my heart in them, seeing an award change lives. Prompter people hate it when I just start ad-libbing. Um, but it is the most beautiful thing to see what happens backstage when people just erupt in tears and you realize their lives, their community's lives, their staff's lives, their parents' lives are inevitably changed by the power of food. Uh, and nowhere is that more evident uh, than with this award, the Humanitarian of the Year is given, yep, is given to an individual or organization working in the realm of food who has given selflessly and worked tirelessly to better the lives of others and society at large. Winners do receive a cash prize of $20,000 to continue their important work, courtesy of the Michael Phillips Humanitarian Fund. Humanitarians, let's just remember that word, humanitarians, see a need, and then launch themselves into the breach. And in doing so, I believe they become the hinge that can bend history for the better. This year's award goes to social entrepreneur and impact investor Olivia Watkins and activist and a personal hero of mine, Karen Washington. These incredible humanitarians are also a pair of visionaries who have set their focus on repairing the economic, physical, and social damage inflicted by the systematic separation of black farmers from their land over many generations. Together, they founded the Black Farmer Fund. And here's a little video to tell you a little more about it. Food means power, nourishment, sustenance. To be able to even to grow your own food gives you that sense of belonging. And so food for me is very powerful and it should be a right for all people. 
So Black Farmer Fund, we're a 501c3 community investment fund. Our mission is to nurture and grow community wealth and health by investing in black agricultural systems of the Northeast. There is a history of discrepancy and discrimination that has happened, and there is not a financial institution that black farmers and food businesses could trust, so we decided to create something that was catered towards black communities. So I'm so proud of Trinity Farm, Farmer David, Farmer Veronica. They're my family. I met them maybe 10, 15 years ago when we were starting our farmer's market in the Bronx and we were looking for farmers and nobody wanted to come to the Bronx and was telling them about our story. And without hesitation, they said, you know, we're on it. And so Farmer David and Farmer Veronica and Trinity Farm has been a staple for the black community. Today we are alive and still trying to move forward because of their help. After 2019, 2020, when my wife and I, we got hit hard financially, it was time to close the door. That's where the Black Farmers Fund came in and they assist us so that we can keep going. Black farmers only own 1% of farmland in this country. There is a 14 to 1 ratio when it comes to a wealth gap. Many farmers are now losing their land, so it's important. You know, I'm trying to be out there making sure that I am encouraging young black little boys and girls the importance of farmland and the importance of going back to the land because the land is our legacy. It starts first with us telling our story, why there is a need for people to invest in black farmers and black businesses. We also have an abundance festival where we bring together our investors, our donors, other community stakeholders, our farmers to celebrate the harvest. So we'll usually have a big meal anytime we're bringing people together because food is really at the center of our work and we wanna be able to celebrate and uplift the food that our farmers grow, the products that the other businesses that we're working with make. Community power is total power is strength, is awesome, and it moves mountain, it moves work. I'm incredibly honored, and I think that, you know, this has provided our work with a national stage. It is showing people who may have not known about the issues with black farmers and food businesses that this is a real thing, and also showing folks that there are solutions right now on the ground working to solve some of these issues, and they should participate with us. You know, when I first heard about it, I was in tears because I do this work not for recognition. I do this work because it's necessary. So when I take this award, it will be because I am representing the voices who have not been heard and the voices that have been doing the work for so long and have not gotten the recognition. So I take this award on their behalf. Olivia Watkins and Karen Washington. was the first time African American has won this award. Hopefully it won't be the last. So I want to thank the James Beard Foundation, my family, for this award. Winning the James Beard Leadership Award in 2014 was an honor. And nine years later, here I am with the Humanitarian Award, especially with Olivia, it's beyond words. Our journey started as a dream, as we sought to right a wrong. The black farmer in America is slowly disappearing with increased debt, 
limited resources and land laws, we decided to do something about it. The plight of the black farmer affects all Americans as we see our stories and history slowly being silenced in schools and libraries. The fabric of America is based on our history, no matter how bad or difficult it might seem. So then, so then, what is it about us that people fear? What is it about being black in America that still makes people feel fearful? To those I say, we are only human. So when you see us and you see me, love me, respect me, embrace me. And see only we. I will treasure this award to remind myself the gift of being human, to give of oneself to help others. Thank you, Olivia. Thank you, James Beer Foundation, for this incredible honor. This recognition fills my heart with immense gratitude, and it reminds me of food and ag's power to transform lives and shape communities. I also want to thank my family and the Black Farmer Fund team for their unwavering support and dedication. Without the team, none of this would have been possible. For Mama Karen and I to be deemed Humanitarians of the Year in the realm of food is to embrace a responsibility, a responsibility to nourish not just bodies, but also spirits, and to promote not just food, but also justice and equity. This award is a testament to our efforts and the remarkable individuals and organizations worldwide who dedicate their lives to fighting food injustice and championing sustainable agricultural practices. But our work is far from complete. There's so much to do. And as we celebrate tonight, let us also reflect upon the challenges ahead. Let us recognize the urgent need to address our food system's inequalities, and let us commit to respecting the earth and preserving its abundance for generations. Thank you all for standing by our side as we continue to create a sustainable and equitable food system. I am so blessed that in a whole other area of my life, I get to work with Mama Karen and learn so much from her. She truly is a for Yeah, your mom is something else. God, I love that woman. Uh, now, to present our next award for Outstanding Hospitality, I am pleased to introduce two representatives from American Airlines. And being hospitable, they want to make sure you make it to the after party at Union Station safely and on time. So please turn and locate the exits where you'll pick up your boarding passes from the American flight attendants on the way out and make your way safely over there. This will point you to the way to the food and beverage area, which you will no doubt be quite ready for. Please welcome from American Airlines, Caroline Clayton and Julia Coney. Thank you, Andrew. And you didn't ask, but you're hired as a flight attendant <laughs> for American. American Airlines is proud of its long-standing partnership with the James Beard Awards. We know that great restaurants draw travelers from around the world and unforgettable meals become cherished memories that inspire new journeys and happy returns. That's especially true of restaurants where the elements conspire to create an ambiance of perfect welcome. With that in mind, it's my pleasure to share the nominees for Outstanding Hospitality presented by American Airlines. The nominees are... The Black Cypress. Bottega, 
Luna Drake, The Quarry, Sepia. And the winner is The Quarry. <laughs> I cannot get enough of the backstory here. The talented chef and owner of the quarry is none other than Mary Lou, Lulu Ranta, and she's always been single-minded about hard work paying dividends. She used to work as a housekeeper in her native Manila and even held factory jobs when she emigrated to North Carolina. When she finally saw Munson, wow. she described it as paradise. She saw the, the mountains, she saw the hills, she saw the she saw the lake, and that is where she does this incredible cooking at the quarry. She is dedicated to her craft. She does fine dining, multi-course meals in the middle of Maine. Maine. In the middle, I don't want to say in the middle of nowhere in Maine, right. but in the middle of bucolic Maine. Wow. And she is really a great testament to the power of dedication to hard work. And, and incredible. And she, she she can do it all. I know that Lulu can do it all. Wow. In Maine, again, the diversity across the nation. Oh. oh! Thank you, Foundation. I don't know what to say. Oh my God, I'm so nervous. Now everybody know where my town is, 670. Residents, now we have 671. I'm thinking we should be here with me. Yes. Oh, my goodness. I never dream, not my wildest dream that I'm standing here today. I'm just have my restaurant and I call it the boonies. And somehow Mr. Beard still found me. Don't stop believing. Please keep working. Oh, my God. I want to thank my husband. He's told me that I have a CISO in me. I don't know if anybody knows CISO. I'll tell you, it's a Finnish word. He said it's um, perseverance, moxie, can I say big kahuna? <laughs> Rolled into one and he said, I have a CISO here I am. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Please welcome James Beard Award winner, Sean Sherman. What's up, Chicago? Um, it's Akiya and good evening, folks. Um, I'm proud to announce this year's Best New Restaurant Award. As last year's recipient of this award with our indigenous-focused restaurant, Awamni, in Minneapolis, I get the amount of hard work it takes to do something different, to pull off a restaurant with focus and vision and intention. Every restaurant on this list has more than ego and a bottom line in mind, so for this alone, you all deserve accolades. So palame yelo, and thank you for not just to the owners and the chefs, but to all of the hardworking restaurant people who make these restaurants and these visions possible. It's truly a community effort to make a forward-thinking restaurant successful. Now, I'm really excited to announce that the nominees for the best new restaurant presented by Bento Box are... Kausa, Department of Culture, Don Artemio, Khan, Lupi and Iris, Leng Juniors, Nolia, Obelix, Restaurant Beatrice, Tatemo, Good luck. And the winner is Khan. Oh. Major, 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 guys. Major. Back to back years wins for, for Greg Gregory. Gourdet. You know, he was a semi finalist for Best Chef for, I don't know, three, four, five, six, seven years, something uh -huh. like that. Some crazy number. Last year, he finally won it for his cookbook. Yep. And this is his first win for a restaurant. And how sweet it must really be because he is known for his entire career for his Asian flavors. He used to run a high-end Chinese restaurant for Jean-Georges Van der Departures was very international. And now this is his own restaurant, his first restaurant that's his. And it's the first time he's really showcased his Haitian heritage in his cooking. And my God, look at his outfit. I mean, I, I know. know. I saw him last night after the media awards and I said, honey, this outfit, you better, what are you wearing tomorrow? And listen, he shows me. <laughs> so he has talked recently about the non-linear path to success. And he is the epitome of the idea Absolutely. of taking twists and turns, but persevering. I 
love Congrats it. Congrats to him and his and his whole team. I mean the whole team. Wow, this is so major, you guys. Oh, look at them. I'm just smiling from ear to ear. I know, this I is... asked him how he felt about this, and he's like, Sophia, we'll see. And we, listen, we are seeing. Thank you all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're, we're gonna start with Haitian Creole class. I'm gonna say sac passe, which means what's up, and you're gonna say not boule. That means it's burning, it's happening, we're hanging out, okay? So on three, sac passe, not boule. All right. Um, thank you, Team Khan. Whew, where to start? In 1492, Christopher Columbus. <laughs> <laughs> he landed on IET, and he forever changed the fate of the native Taino people forever, as did the fate of the enslaved Africans that came over. For 300 years, they were exploited. They were abused and used to make Haiti, one of the richest colonies in the world, producing almost all of the sugar and coffee that was exported to Europe. After 13 years of revolution, the Haitian people found their freedom, inspiring liberation around the world, becoming the world's first back republic. From barbecue to liberation, we have a lot to give to Haiti. Today, I stand a son of Haitian immigrants, a son of my ancestors, and a member of a team 45 people deep. who are committed to telling the story of Haiti and its contributions to the culinary arts and to American culture and to global culture altogether. Um, from the beginning, we always wanted to do things extremely differently, and it hasn't been easy. We had the grace of the pandemic to allow us to see what need, things needed to change in our industry. Um, and we stand, we try to stand, and we hope to stand as an example that paying people fairly Having diverse and mixed gender teams is not this equitable, but effective. Thank you. It hasn't been perfect, but every day we try. I just want to say thank you to my amazing team for all your dedication, your perseverance, believing in me when things are extremely challenging. Uh, my best friend and business partner, Tia Vantage, for pushing us so hard for keeping everything in line. Um, Veronia for leading the kitchen and for being on my side from day one. Connor Ruth, Chef Gabby, DeMont, Erica, Brandon. Thank you all so much. Um, all my team at home who is watching, I appreciate you all so much. Um, my parents for always making sure that we had, I had every opportunity afforded to me and that we always had a strong sense of culture even when I went and studied every type of cuisine before finally realizing that I needed to be um, studying and representing my Haitian culture as strongly as I could. Thank you so much. Thank you, Beard Foundation. Um, we have a lot of work to do to fix our industry. Um, and it's important that we realize that we have to do the work. We have to have uncomfortable conversations. Um, we have to believe in a culture where we can all exist in peace. Um, we can lift fear um, and we can all respect each other. We can treat our guests as well as we can treat our employees. Thank you to the city of Portland for allowing us to create something that people from all the world want to visit. Um, and thank you, Haiti, um, for just being the place of my ancestry. Thank you all. likely know this guy already, but I'm going to hype him up a little bit anyway. Uh, he put pizza on the James Beard map 20 years ago when he took home Best Chef Southwest with his pies. Uh, last year, he topped that, see what I did there, by winning Outstanding Restaurateur. Uh, now he's back to pass that torch on to somebody new. Um, 
it, it, I'm supposed to read these words where I describe him as a close personal friend, but I have to be honest with you, I don't just love this man, I openly admit I am in love with this man. My friend, Chris Bianco. Andy. It's okay, I call you Andy. Of course. You know, call we're, me anything. We're amongst friends. Call me anything you want. Just an intimate you audience. Just keep people. cooking for me. You can call yeah. me anything. Oh, man. Well, it's, uh, I'm just here. I'm just the eye candy for you. Well, okay, cool. So, yes, uh, it blew my mind uh, last year, and I was definitely not prepared for any of it. Um, when uh, we won this award, I'm reading this, I'm sorry. Um, anyway, I, I'd love to uh, think that I'm about to make some else's to make some money tonight, and, uh, and just like that. Um, I don't care what anybody says, it, it, it does change things. Uh, when people uh, affirm that you're doing the right thing and you're in the right place, um, that pat on the back, it's, it's, it's a big deal. Um, so it's my absolute pleasure to, uh, to spread some pride and joy tonight. Um, the nominees for Outstanding Restaurant Tour are Brandon Kraskowski, Evans Leadership and Restaurant Institute. Greg Doolin, Doolin's Soul Food Kitchen, Doolin's on Crenshaw, and Doolinville. Aaron Hoskins, Sarah Simmons, Nicole Story, and Ely Yigo, City Grid Hospitality Group. Yen V and Quinn Fan, Fabak Soup Shop. Pacific Standard Time and The Boat. Ellen Yin, High Street Hospitality Group. And the winner is, and there's only winners in this room, I'll tell you right now, it's full of winners. <laughs> oh, 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 y'all. Yeah. Um, the winner is Ellen Yin. Unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, I, Chris is right. I mean, everyone who's nominated is absolutely. a winner. I mean, it, it is such an incredible honor to be even just nominated, to be standing side by side with the absolute best and to be voted on by your peers. But for Ellen's win, I think there's no question that Philadelphia is really one of the most exciting restaurant cities in the country. Fully and agree. Ellen has done so much to lay the groundwork for that scene. She's been obsessed with the restaurants. So she was a server at a Chinese restaurant growing up. And she opened oh. Fork, a trailblazing new American restaurant in 1997, when pretty much all the fine dining restaurants in Philadelphia were old school French. And like literally all of her restaurants have gotten national accolades. And after four semifinalist nods, Ellen and her team are going to take this one to Philly tonight. Wow. And to so be incredible. an outstanding restaurateur as a woman, not, not that it should make a difference, but it does make a difference. Yeah. And she runs her sure. team with kindness and generosity and, and uh, just a really futuristic way of looking at things. And she, Ellen, I'm obsessed with Ellen, so I'm very, very, very excited for her. Also, I want everybody to know, truly one of the chicest women on the carpet <laughs> tonight. It's such a shame I didn't get to interview her, because, wow, so unbelievably chic. Look at her. So demure. Ellen comes from love. And from the city of brotherly love. Philly. Sure, sure. <laughs> Okay. Oh my God, <laughs> my heart's been racing. Thank you, James Beard Foundation. I love hearing the stories of all the incredible people who make up this industry, and I am so inspired by the work all the nominees are doing to invest in their communities and continue furthering our industry. Congratulations to everyone, and thank you to you all. I fell in love with this industry when I was a teenager, but it took me 25 years to realize that a restaurant was the first place that I felt a true sense of belonging. That first restaurant, the Fromagerie in Rumson, New Jersey, shaped my future, making endless possibilities come to fruition. To Philadelphia, you made me belong. Your ongoing commitment fostered a world-class restaurant scene that represents our diversity, ethnicity, history, and resiliency. I could not be more proud 
to accompany such a talented group of Philadelphians to represent our city. To my entire team of those here and at home, I love you guys. <laughs> I am so grateful for all that you do to nurture our community and to create a place of belonging, not only for our guests, but also for our coworkers and teammates. With me, Christina, Avery, George, Kevin, Eli, Harry Jamison, Luke Eschbach, Carolyn Conrad, and Brooke Reitner. Thank you all so much. Eli Culp, my partner here tonight, thank you for over 10 years of inspiration, friendship, and support. You continue to amaze me. Our family tree is vast. I am so grateful to so many of the past people who have supported me. Anne-Marie Lasher, Terrence Fury, John Nodler, Sam Kincaid, Alex Bois, Aaron Kavulich, John Patterson, you all helped make our group what it is today. Our collaborators, AKA and Corman Communities, Marguerite Rogers, Gia Vecchio, Foxglove Communications, Visit Philly, thank you all so much. To my sisterly love collective partners, Jill Weber, Jen Carroll, Sophia DeLeon, and all Philadelphia's women entrepreneurs, you inspire me to push harder and to mentor and elevate women to grow and succeed. Thank you to my friends and family who put up with our crazy hours, my brothers Mark and Ken who enabled me to do what I do, my mother, whose cooking inspired the Wonton Project, Roberto Sella, and all our investors and mentors, thank you all for believing in us. Last but not least, Wayne, <laughs> who has been a huge part of this entire journey, sticking by me despite my craziness, and we couldn't be here without you. To all the people who could not be mentioned, you are all so greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. woman is a legend. Uh, next up, we're moving on to the award for Outstanding Restaurants, presented by Aquapana Natural Spring Water. And to help announce this year's winner, please welcome Sarah Mayer from Aquapana. Thank you, Andrew, and good evening. You didn't think when we were driving in that cab in London trying to escape that oppressive heat at that other thing that this would be where we'd wind up? I, one year ago. I knew it. I, I knew it. Okay. I knew it. Anyway, sorry. Knew. Continue. No. Uh, they're Continue. They're Continue. Waiting. Okay. In recognition of great American restaurants that demonstrate excellence in every aspect of what they do, from the sourcing and preparation of ingredients to wage structures and workplace culture, the nominees for Outstanding Restaurant presented by Aquapana Natural Spring Water are Copin, Cora Cora, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Lucia, Nitas. Big night for this town, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. This is so awesome. I, I mean, it really is. Again, We were Philly. just talking about Philadelphia. Yeah, just talking about Philly. Philly's this strong. Is, this is so amazing. This couple is just the cool list. So they buy this restaurant in, like, 2015. They completely gut it. I mean, it takes 18 months. They completely gut this restaurant. Then in order to open it and or christen it, they get married in the That's restaurant. Awesome. Come on. How cool I is love, that? I love, right? And I never had a chance to eat there, but to celebrate my own beard win last year, I decided to take the train to Philly from New York and eat at this restaurant, which is so cool. I still think about the Cine Fredo. Like, really, the cool list. They are the coolest. I am so thrilled for them. I'm so thrilled for Philly. I, and it's a great <laughs> moment. I mean, last 
I think 2019, Zahav took this award home. So it's an exciting time. Where, I mean, Philly's a great food town. Yeah, it that really little is. Rittenhouse area is really booming. This is one of those places that even at 5 p.m. it's like packed. Yeah. You know, it's just like a scene. I'm going to show up there at 4.45. <laughs> yeah, you want to get there early. Yeah. Because it's not just the food goods, but the, the cocktails, really the ambiance. Also, it's almost like there's actors in there. Like, everyone looks pretty in there. I mean, look at the stage right now. Everyone <laughs> yeah. looks very good. It's amazing. Everyone's, Everyone's like, cleaned up nice. Yes. Yeah, it's really, really cool. What a night. What a night. I mean, this is a big, this is a, oh, yeah. What a night. What a night. Well, well, well. We're here. We are here. I just, I want to accept the award on behalf of the FSS gang that's up here, the ones that are back in Philadelphia. I am eternally grateful for everything you, you bring to the restaurant every day. You bring our vision to life and you have changed our world. And it means everything. To the guests that come in and make this place their second home, you have done so much for us. Gene and Larry and Natalie, you're out there. Yeah, there you are. You're there. They, you change our lives. Uh, Craig, Matt, you keep us here. We wouldn't be here without you. Chef Paul Pelt, my chef, the day you, you brought me in that kitchen, you changed my family's life forever, and you changed so many. And I'm so grateful for what you do. Chrissy, Charlie, we made it. <laughs> we made it, and we're here. Mom, I can't, I can't even begin. You supported me through everything. Even when you didn't believe, you supported me. You, you know, you were, you were there and you, you made it happen. To Hermione and my dad, I know you're excited. I know you see us here and it, it means the world. It's incredible, it's incredible. I, that's all I got, this is, this is incredible. Thank you so much. And uh, to, to Ruby at home, mommy and daddy miss you and love you, and I get to wake up next to this woman every day, and it is the best gift that life has given me. I love you. Bye. presenters have four James Beard Awards between them, including one Outstanding Chef Award each. They are beloved in our industry for their leadership and their outspokenness, but also because they never stopped being cooks themselves. Uh, I happen to know that uh, Mashama just raced down here from the patron dinner in the balcony, doing what I have to assume is at least one very serious costume change en route. Please welcome Paul Kahan and Mashama Bailey. Thank you, Andrew. Um, it's an honor to be here again. Even when I had to do an old school Wonder Woman twirl and change into this uh, Ralph Lauren ensemble. <laughs> um, so, speaking as someone living and breathing this work every day, I can tell you that the thing that makes this evening so meaningful is being in the physical presence of so many great and talented colleagues. Right on. Like right yourself. On. <laughs> Um, we work all the time, and um, it is our moment to touch base 
and refuel and inspire each other. Oh, those are, are truly words to live by. I love that. Uh, and I just want to say that uh, it's been a really special and beautiful evening uh, and an absolute thrill to be here, to meet you for the first time. Um, really great. And I know it's been a long night and I know you guys are hungry. Um, so we're going to move it right along. Without further ado, the 2023 nominees for Outstanding Chef are... Rachel Miller, Nightshade Noodle Bar, Nikki Nakayama, and Naka. Eric Ramirez, Lama In, Rob Ruba, Oyster Oyster, Hajime Sato, Sozai. And the winner is. Oh God. Raw Ruba, Oyster Oyster. Wow, guys, this has been amazing. My very first restaurant at Chef Awards. And you <laughs> did so exceptional. I am so grateful for the both of you and how great a job you did tonight. We obviously want to congratulate Oyster oh. Oyster, but I want to congratulate the two of you for being exceptional on the red carpet and beyond. I couldn't have done it without you, Neelan. Seriously. It was such a blast. Such a blast. See you all next year? Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, yes, please. Oh, I mean, you can't give me away now. Are you kidding? <laughs> Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you for joining us. I like to have the pronunciation of my last name on here. Thank you. It's a lifelong thing. Um, wow. Uh, I'll keep it short because I know you're all hungry. You want something to drink. Um, I'm blown away by this. I, I really didn't know what to think. Um, I just want to thank the James Beard Foundation for seeing the vision I had and the changes I've made in, in my career to do this. I want to thank my, my business partner and great friend, Max Kohler. Your belief in everything we do and your thoughtfulness is contagious, and I'm very thankful for that. To my wife, Deb, um, I wouldn't be here without you. I don't know what I'd be doing. You're my rock. You're, you're amazing. You're the most lovely wife and amazing mother to our children. Hi, Harper and Quinn, I know you're watching. It's very late, you have school tomorrow. Um, and to our team, I'm just gonna rattle off some names and they all deserve this too. So thank you, Vincent, Danny, Alex, Susani, Evan, Jeff, M, Ashley, Abby, Theodora, Salvador, Eric, and Andrew, thank you so much. And to leave it at this, I just hope every day I can give the next generation, everything I have so that they can progress and succeed. Thank you so much. Well, everybody, that's our show. We can't wait to see you all at what I like to call the eating part coming up next at Union Station. It's a short walk or you can jump on one of the shuttle buses parked outside. A huge, huge final congratulations to all the nominees and winners. We leave you. We leave you with some really cool images of their amazing and inspiring teams all around the country. And from this incredible team of co-hosts, Good night. Peace. Good night. Night. I am. Come on. Thank you. This award on the stage where his. Oh. I am. <laughs> Served.